The Horrible Gamers podcast may contain content not suitable for all ages. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Horrible Gamers Podcast, show number 255, being recorded on May the 4th, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Jesus Gonzalez, also known as Jesus Walks Lot. Today, I'm joined by the crew, well, one of the crew, I guess just one person, yes. Gunny Chief, Henry Merrill from the West Coast, the Best Coast. Welcome back, Gunny, welcome. Hey, it's springtime. Mm-hmm. Is it, is it spring already officially? Is it officially spring? I haven't checked the calendar. I don't think it's become officially spring yet. But how are you? I'm great. Streamer. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Find me streaming people on Mixer.com forward slash Jesus Walks Lord. You can also follow us on Twitter at underscore Horrible Gamers. You can leave us a review on iTunes. You can leave us a review on Google Podcasts. You can leave us a thumbs up on Stitcher. You can recommend us to your friends, which is probably the best thing you can do. Um... You can also join the Facebook group, Horrible Gamers Podcast Community. That is a close group on Facebook, so that means anything that we post in the group or you post in the group is not visible by people outside of the group. And, um, yeah. Yeah, why is my camera glitching now? You see that? No, yeah, looks fine to me. It's weird. On my end, it's being a little weird. Oh, okay, good. You look great. Anyways, anyways. <laughs> people... You can always email us feedback at HorribleGamers.com, and you can support the show financially over at Patreon.com forward slash Horrible Gamers, like Jonathan Hallass, Alan Maybe, Evan Tanaka, John Jerome, Adam Sunday, Clint Theo, Dirty Bites, Robbie Wheat, David Stanner, Brian Capesso, The Mayo, Jonathan Arcelo, Pork Chapu, Bo Sison, Jason Craft, and Henley. Um, thank you guys for being yeah. Patreons. I appreciate it. Our intro song is done by Fallon and Twistix, and it's called The Breakout, and our extra song is done by Broker Free, and it's called Night Owl. Now let's get to talking video games. First off and foremost, I want to thank everyone who watched my stream tonight on Mixer. Yeah! Fuck That was yeah. a great stream. That was, that was you were a featured streamer on Mixer. Stream. Yeah, that was amazing. I was featured by Sea of Thieves, so I had like a thousand people watching there, maybe more. Yeah, it was just fucking craziness. It was awesome. I lost count after about 1,100. Yeah, same here. I couldn't keep up with the chat. I was like, what, what, what do I read? What do I do? How do I react? Am I turning red? Why am I sweating right now? I don't know. It My was heart just... was beating because I had, I had the band hammer rights right to my oh, fingertips, yeah. and I'm, yeah. I was just waiting for somebody to just, <laughs> just start spam, and I'm just going to like start ban. banning. <laughs> <laughs> Gunny is the mod on the stream, so Gunny bans the shit out of people if he wants to. Um, but yeah, thanks to everybody who followed and all that good stuff. It was amazing. Pretty cool stuff. I got 30 new followers off of that. That was pretty cool. Nice. Um, anyways, anyways, you can watch me on Mixer, people. Mixer.com forward slash Jesus Walks Lot. And um, right now, currently, the reason they're featuring streamers and the reason they're, lots of people are watching Sea of Thieves, probably the number one game on Mixer right now, is because if you watch 30 of the arena battles on Mixer, you get like exclusive loot. And so, yeah, and this loot is expensive on eBay. Like, I've looked it up on eBay how much it costs to buy, like, the DLC code for this loot, and it's, like, 150 bucks. Wow, because it, it even showed on my iPad that since I'm logged in with my Microsoft account that it it even showed a thing that, hey, you've watched three of the, what are those battles called that you're, the arena, mode that you're uh, in? Arena battles or whatever? Arena battles. So it showed, like, you've already watched three and continue watching to yeah, earn more. Yeah, if you watch 30 battles, which is quite a long time, that's, like, <clears throat> each battle takes 20 minutes, so that's, you gotta add that up, 20 times 30. That's a long fucking time, Gunny. It's a long Because I saw time. people that were just, they even commented in your chat that, like, oh, I just got it on my phone, I'm gonna let it keep running. So, they, I mean, you were getting people to either yeah. periodically watch you or watch you full time that was cool so that was 10 hours that's 10 hours of sea of thieves you got to watch between now mm. and monday to get this that's loot. easy guys it's easy just watch me stream <laughs> yeah just go to just go to mixer <laughs> Jesus walks a lot. i've you been streaming button. i've been streaming quite a bit man sea of thieves is an amazing game i've been streaming that um thanks to everybody who's watched my stream all week actually i've actually streamed earlier this week some totally accurate battle simulator 
And, and, and I actually, that's one of the games I played. So let's talk about all these games I played because I'm talking about them. I streamed them, so I obviously played them. One game that I played this week, Gunny, is called Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. This is a early access title on Steam. Uh, I don't know if it's on anything else at the moment, but I know it's, a, it's on Steam as an early access title. And pretty much all of this is a battle simulator. And this is also on the Mayo Pass, so I was able to play this on Monday a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So this game is fucking good. Thanks to the Mayo. Shout out to the Mayo Pass. Um, the Mayo. So I was so. playing this, and <laughs> and it's a pretty fun little game. So you you spawn, and you, you there's an empty side of the map that's your side, and there's another side down the middle that's the enemies, and you usually see them lined up or how they're going to attack or whatever. Sometimes they have hidden troops in the trees or the grass, so you got to be careful. But... The whole point is you have enough. You have this limited amount of points that you can use. You use these points to buy like infantry, whether it's the spearmen, the shield guys, the the, the trebuchets, or whatever, like the archers, all that good stuff. You could buy different like types of military troops and line them up however you want to, and then you just hit start, and they kind of just go and attack each other depending on how you lined them up or how you know, etc. All that good stuff. And they got kind of hard in some of those battles. Some of those battles were really tricky, uh, but I was able to beat most of them, if not all of them. I got to the point of the end of the campaign, one of the campaigns where, um, yeah, so I beat like the whole tutorial, and then I got at the end of the first campaign, and now I'm like, I like this challenge mode almost. And it's kind of like a campaign, but it's way harder than the normal one. It's like super hard. And you unlock all kinds of troops. So like I have anywhere from cavemen, to like like uh what's the last troop that i got was like a maybe are they spartans or something so, so it moves up so eventually you'll be like dynasty and then it it keeps yeah, going yeah. so like yeah it goes it goes from like cavemen to like farmers to yeah. like uh knights then to uh after knights it goes to like uh barbarians or something then it goes from them to like something else and it keeps going like to romans to greeks to uh uh, something else. I think I think the last one is samurai, and maybe there's ninjas in there too. I think the yeah, and I think the ninja was coming soon. Was yeah. it or there? There was like two of them that were that just not added. As the samurais death. are fucking cool. The samurais have like this thing called the dragon, and it's not really a dragon, but it looks like a dragon. But there's four people holding like these sticks, and, like this huge dragon thing above them. And yeah, those run, are cool. They run down the field, but they the thing shoots out fire. Like the fucking dragon shoots out real fire. So it's like. <laughs> fucking burning the entire field and just taking everyone out that is catching on fire. Um, super cool, man. Then you have, like, actual, like, with the Greeks, you have, like, the Greek soldiers and shit, the hoplites and all that good stuff. But then you also have, like, uh, like Zeus. <laughs> you can spawn in Zeus as, like, the main badass guy, but he costs, like, 2,000 coins. That's a lot of points, you know, because you only get, like, 3,000 points per battle. So 2,000, that means you're using up more than half of your points to just have this one dude in the battle. And yeah, he's a powerful guy, but he can be taken out. You know what I mean? He's not invincible. He can get yeah, killed. Especially if the other side has like too Big many guys. archers, they're yeah. going to yeah, they're gonna let him have it with yeah, arrows. If their archers are way too... Uh, yeah, cause they have a lot of archers and they're way back there just camping while your dude's fighting and running at them, then yeah, it's going to cause problems for your guy and you're going to lose... But I, I, I love the game. It was a lot of fun. It's it's a stupid little game, but it's so cool to like line up your archers or your spearmen. I love having the shield guys in the front and then like putting like the spear guys behind them with spears. So like yeah, guys, the like, protectors. I yeah. Think so like the guys with the shield are walking forward with their fucking shields, right? And they get kind of bunched up. The the enemies kind of clash into them. Like you see the enemies just boom, like run into like, them, like, like a Game screen. of Thrones situation, kind of right? like Game of Thrones last weekend. Reminded right? me of them. Yeah, yeah, where like you have like the dudes running at the people, and the guys are just holding up the shields, just fucking getting slammed into by the people running at them. And that's pretty much kind of what happens in this game. You got like these crazy like little monkey dudes or whatever. Like what they do is they don't really have any weapons, but they attach to your guys and they kind of drag them off. So like there'll be like fifty of them. One of the battles was like there was fifty of them. There's a tiny bridge. And so I had like yes. a bunch of shield dudes and I had like a bunch of spear guys behind them and I had a bunch of lines of spear guys, shield dudes, spear guys, shield dudes. And then in the end, I had a bunch of archers. But like, dude, fucking sp those little dudes that jump up and grab your guys and take them down, they're like super fast. So like I had my shield guys moving up to the bridge 
these fucking things were like slamming into my guys and it was like probably 50 of them or 60 of them just slamming into the shield dudes and it was like damn damn they're getting taken out <laughs> <laughs> i like the i have only played the sandbox mode and yeah. i know what you're talking about I, I i played that map with the bridge in the middle yeah so if you get like an elephant you can't put it i mean you could put it wherever you want to but it's only going to run forward at this yeah. point in time where the game is so you got to put it near the bridge or in front of the bridge because you want that thing to run forward and mow down the enemy yeah and <clears throat> the elephants are super cool yeah you have elephants you have like monkeys uh, you have like uh, samurais. You have a bunch of different kind of warriors, and they're all really well done. Um, yeah, I just love the game. I really think it's amazing. I fucking love it. Like, it's a lot of fun. And, it, and the the cool part about it is, and I hope they keep this, where it's when there's like battles going on, and they're just making these weird, different sounds, like hoo, you know, like just <laughs> these goofy, yeah, these goofy <laughs> sounds, like from all the different types of enemies. They sound like fucking turkeys. Yeah, they sound like turkeys, and I'm just like, all right. So I can see it's really lighthearted. Just running and... at you, like, <laughs> just trying to fight. Yeah, yeah it's super fun. And I had a situation where uh, I had like the, I had like my main attackers mm. that were still like on my side of the bridge, and then I had my healers, right? So they can they can kind of reach out, you know, and they have like their magic wand to kind of keep you. You know, if, you know, with full health or what have you. And then what happened was uh, a few of my guys went down and they were like, they were dead. And my protector was just like, like, he's still trying to like revive yeah. them, you know? It's like, no, you can't do that. Yeah. Like, come on. It's I funny, just had man. to laugh, you know? Yeah, it's funny some of the stuff that went down and, and happened. A lot of, so some of those battles were kind of tricky and they were kind of hard. But I had a lot of fun playing it. So this is called Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. Find it on Steam. I don't know if it's on any other platform at the moment. I would check on Switch, but I doubt it. Because it's early access, so I doubt yeah. that it's available on there. Anyways, other games that I played this week I want to talk about real quick. I played, of course, some Sea of Thieves. So recently, the new Sea of Thieves Arena update came out, Gunny, and that mode is fucking fun. If you can get a good crew of people that are coordinated and can plan together and are good at taking orders and planning and like one guy being on the map, one guy staying on the wheel, one guy can, you know, grabbing the sails or loading cannons or repairing the ship. If you have a good, well-balanced team, you're going to do super well in this mode. Um, if you don't have that, if you don't have the super well-balanced team, then it could be real hard to beat this mode. Um, so first day that I played, I played on Tuesday night. I believe that was when the update came out, either Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, I actually played with Tedekin and Sub-Z. Uh, shout out to them. I played with them, and they actually got me a win. Um, of course, I helped. I mean, it wasn't just useless. I, of course, helped them play. <laughs> but, yeah. But <laughs> we were playing together. Um, I think we had four people at the end of the day, or maybe three people. I don't know how it ended up happening. We, you got, like, four people in the party, and we were all playing. And um, we won. I think we actually ended up inviting the random kid. There was a kid that was playing in the game with us. I invited him to the party. He was this, like this little kid. And like, hey guys, I'm like, what's up, kid? Follow us. You know, like you, you seem like a cool kid. You know, he was like a little kid, but he wasn't annoying. So he was just there playing the game. Uh, a lot of fun though, man. Uh, sea of Thieves is an incredible game. At this point in time, like it's become a lot of fun to play the game. It's just a blast. It, it really think, is. That mode is. And fun. I know you mentioned it before, Jesus, but Darkness Four Two Nine. I noticed he's been playing it more often, and he's a big streamer yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, I see lots of streamers actually playing it. Even on Twitch, over on Mixer, it's probably the most played game right now on Twitch. Pea Soup Bandits have it been is, playing yeah. a lot of that. Pea Soup Bandits yeah. are playing the shit out of it. Um, so today, actually, I got together with uh, the Blaze Experience, and we were playing a uh, match. Uh, his friend was loading the game or downloading it, so we couldn't play with him. But me and Blaze were in there with randoms. And it was funny because <laughs> me being on PC, I can talk to the people inside of the p inside of the game and inside of the xbox live party at the same time so like i can push to talk and and the people in the game can hear me and then blaze can hear me so like the whole time blaze is talking to me all the time because he thinks i'm always talking to him (laughs) 
and then yeah. I, I'm, then I'm relaying messages to the guys in the in the boat from Blaze, you know, because Blaze is like, all right, tell them we need to do this and this and this. And I would be like, okay, guys, we need to do this, this, and this. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, we need to do that. But I don't know if he was realizing that I was talking to them or he was just like responding to me. I don't know if he was confused. Yeah, the, ma- the magic push to talk button. I like that. Uh, but yeah, it was incredible, man. We had a pretty good team. I mean, we got second place tonight with Blaze. Um, almost got first. At one point, we had the lead and then we lost it at the last, literally, the last 30 seconds of the match. We lost to second place. Um, and then it was really cool right after that. Uh, that's when I got featured by the Sea of Thieves. I'm a featured streamer. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. And that was incredible. And yeah, from then on out, I just kept streaming and had quite a bit of followers with people watching, just random people watching. Like, yeah, we. I'm just watching your stream. I just want to watch. And, okay, I'll well, watch, dude. Cool. I was like, hit that follow button, folks. <laughs> Yeah, got quite a bit of followers from that, and so yeah, I'm grateful for that. Thanks, you just thank you to the Sea of Thieves team, and uh, yeah. So and and that last crew that you had, they of course, I think they all had mics. Oh, they did, yeah. So that was good to watch you guys communicate all together and and yeah. almost come in first place. We almost came in first place. We had the lead for a bit there, and then like I said, the very last few minutes of the match, we lost the lead, and then the one guy he was pretty good because he was trying to he was like. All right, aim a little lower, everybody. And you guys were just destroying some of those Dude, ships. Dude, we were destroying those ships. They were like literally the team that I had. Every was, hit was was, was a, like yeah, yeah, every yeah, every cannonball was a hit. That one ship couldn't stand a chance. Dude, they literally try to come up on us and fuck with us a little bit. You know, they were like coming up like all slow and shit, trying to fuck with us because <laughs> we were on the top and they were trying to like you know sink us. So we lose points. And they fired like three little cannonballs at us. <laughs> we yeah. then we rolled up behind them, like because they were like at an angle. So we pulled up right behind them. I mean, we were at like you know at a, like a ninety degree angle from them. And then, literally, the team that I had, they just unloaded like, I want to say probably like forty cannonballs into that ship, probably easily, right? Like it just, was just nonstop, like literally nonstop, just do 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 do. Yeah. Like it was just reload, reload, fire, reload, fire. Like the, the barrage was nonstop. I bet you, if I was on that ship, I would have been like. Holy crap! Who the hell did we just piss off? Because <laughs> yeah, it seemed like it seemed like like we were just we were just destroying them. We literally destroyed that ship. That ship stood no chance against us. And then we sunk him, and then we just kept going. The problem with that is that we like ran out of cannonballs really easily, really fast. By the end of that match, we had no cannonballs, which was the whole reason we lost the lead because we couldn't really defend ourselves. You know, our ship didn't sink in the end. Nobody sunk us, but we were trying to sink the green ship, and we didn't have cannonballs. So what do we do? You know, like there's nothing we could do. It, it was yeah. kind of crappy. Um, but yeah, so this is a lot of fun. They have a new campaign mode, Gunny. So you got this new campaign where you get quests, and these quests is a story in the quest. So you have to um, finish the story. I barely did the first part of it. Um, the first voyage of it. So I did it with that with Mojo and Jonathan Hall and somebody else. Um, yeah, I tried to play an arena with Mojo, Jonathan Hall, and who the fuck was there? Jonathan Hall, Mojo, me. Alan? Maybe Alan. <gasps> Maybe somebody else. Dave? No. Maybe. I don't know who the hell was the other person. I forget. <laughs> I do know Mojo and Jonathan were there, but uh, yeah. It so really is work it out. is it like a linear thing? I mean, or you can just continue to just do whatever you want, like you normally would in Sea of The Thieves. Voyage, yes, yeah. So it's like a you pick up this book next to the guy in the bar, um, the guy who's protecting the door for the Pirate of Legends. You pick up the the book from him, and then, or not not from him, but next to him, there's a book on the table. You pick it up, and then from there, you start reading like the book, and it's called like. The pirate legend of so and so crusty crab or some shit, and then you like you're like we started off here. We and then they said like we started off at Devil Strike this island, and then from here we sailed south, but then we got attacked by this other ship called the blah blah blah. So we had a loop up northeast, and then we threw our chest overboard. So like you're like okay, so we have to go to Devil Strike, go this way, go up northeast, and then the chest should be in the water. So then you find the chest in the water, you bring it on board, the thing goes, okay, next we sailed over to this island and we 
buried this, this, and this. And then you got to go to that island and figure out what they did. Or like, oh, we played music next to this stone and this happened or this triggered this. And then you got to pretty much just like these riddles that you got to solve. Kind of like the treasures, you know, they have like the riddles, but it's like a whole book of riddles. Okay. Um, so like I said, we finished the first part of it, maybe the second part of it. Um, and it's like a 15-hour campaign. Probably, oh, that's good. I think this is what players have been asking for. You know, instead of just kind of get in there willingly, have fun for a little bit, which is fine. But then let's let's add a single player campaign to it as well, yeah, or yeah. a and you can play this co-op al- campaign. Yeah, you can play this alone on a sloop, or you can play this with people. Like literally, as as you're playing the game, it'll just progress you with your friends or whatever. So that's really cool. Um, so there's that. Yeah, great. So uh, I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun doing that, and and I look forward to playing some more of that as well. I do really like the arena, though, man. The arena is a lot of fun. You, the whole point of the arena is there's five different ships, five different colors. There's red, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And as what you're doing this, everyone spawns in, four people per ship. There's galleons. They're all galleons. And there's two little drop-off points in the middle of the map. So you're in a circle area of the map. It's like an, uh, a circle on the map of the CFDs map, and it'll be like, all right, each everybody has like treasure maps that are usually there'll be one or two or three that you spawn with. Everyone has the exact same treasure maps. Every every crew has the same maps. So your your goal is to look at the map, find out which island it is. So you gotta like make sure the picture matches that picture, and you gotta like, all right, we gotta head southeast. So then you gotta like head southeast with your crew, and then you have to get to that island, and you gotta dig up the chests that are on the island there's x's on the map you grab those chests you take them to the delivery points which is the two little red cert- red ships in the middle of the map they're like they have like flares shooting out of them you got to jump on those ships they're not really ships they're kind of just like broken little bases or whatever they look like a ship you jump on there you find two people you cash in your chest each chest you cash in is worth a thousand points each time you find a chest, say I'm I'm on the island and I dig up a chest and somebody kills me. Even though they killed me, I dug up that chest so I get 100 points for discovering that chest for mm. my team. And then as you're getting points, your team levels up. Um, if your team attacks another ship, say we come up across another ship and we fire upon them and we get hits, each hit that we get on them is 25 points for our team. Each person we kill on that crew, say I jump out of our boat, I get on their boat, and I kill two other crew members, that'll be 10 points. Because each kill of another player is only worth 5 points. So there's really no benefit to killing another player unless they're on your ship or you want to jump on their ship and sabotage them. Um, now you're uh, the little thing that pulls up your anchor. I forget what it's called. That thing takes damage now. So if somebody fires a cannonball and that cannonball hits that thing, that thing will break and your anchor drops automatically. So you got to grab a piece of wood and repair that to be able oh, to Oh, the wheel up. itself you have to repair? Yeah. Also, your steering wheel for the ship. Yeah, that one also breaks too. So if that breaks, you can't steer the ship. Oh, wow. Yeah. Your ship will be going in fucking circles. It'll start turning right or it just does whatever it wants. So... <laughs> Yeah, you got to repair that real quick if you're close to an island because you're going to be crashing into that island really fast. Um, So, yeah, there's that. Um, Lots of cool strategies. I've learned to uh, never stop at one of those cash-in points, just kind of do a drive-by. So what I mean by a drive-by is have, like, two people from your crew with chest. Let's say you you have two chests to cash in. Have the guy standing on the edge of the boat and just kind of sail by there. Have him jump off, have him get on there and cash him in, and then just have them catch a mermaid to get back on your boat. Right. Instead you of don't want to get yeah, off. Instead of yeah. everyone getting off. Because if your boat sinks, say, Gunny, say you're in the lead. You Now you cashed in one chest, you got blah, blah, blah. You got like 1,500 points. And you're anchored there. And say the yellow team pulls up, your red team, yellow team pulls up on you, and they fire all their cannons at you because you're the only person on the ship. And they sink your ship because you can't repair it fast enough. Your team loses a thousand points. Oh, yeah. They don't gain much. They don't gain the thousand points. The other, like the yellow team, will not get the thousand points, but they get all the points that they just used to, like all the hits they got. They get points for those. And on top of that, your team just lost a thousand points. So that could really make or break a match. You know what I mean? Because yeah. a team could be in the lead the whole game. They could be in the lead by 5,000 points. And if another team is right underneath them with 4,000 points, 
if other crews think like, hey, we should just throw these, fuck these guys. We're all ganging up on them. Everyone ganging up on red team, and everyone gangs up on that one team and takes them out because they're the top players or whatever. The other team wins automatically because they lost a thousand points. So there's a lot of good strategies to that. Um, it's a fun mode. I like it a lot. Yeah, lots of lots of quick action. I've noticed. Yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, yeah, what else? What else? Um, today I've also played some more. Uh, I actually went to my PlayStation Four. I actually played some more Beat Saber this week. Um, had fun with that. I actually beat the song that I was stuck on. I'm proud of myself. I beat it. My body hurts from all the fucking ducking and arm swinging and moving around and shit. <laughs> Being stressed out about it. You know. got exercise, man. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then all of a sudden, like uh, the next song, I couldn't beat. I was like, "Fuck, fuck, man!" Like it's gonna take me another three months to beat this fucking song. Um, so yeah, I put it down. I had to put it down. I was getting frustrated with it. It's an impossible song, but I have to beat that song to move forward. So, I don't know what I'm going to do, Gunny. It's hard. It's start hard. over. Start from the beginning. Oh, Go if, through I, it. if I started from the beginning, dude, I could beat that whole campaign, that first part of it, like in an hour. I'm fucking good at the game. I'm really good at it. Like, I I, I could beat shit on Expert, dude. <laughs> like, I got in really good at the game. Like, right now, there's a song. They've actually switched it up on me. So, like, now, instead of using the two lightsabers or whatever... Uh, you're using only the blue one for this next song that I need to play. And it's on Expert. So, like, all the squares are blue. So I have to, like, cut all the squares on the right and the left of the screen with the one lightsaber. And it's fucking hard. It is hard. Yeah. I'm not a fucking fencer, dude, or whatever the fuck those people who play with swords are called. <laughs> maybe you will be after this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But, um, but yeah. So there's that. Um. See, um, uh, not see it was uh, Beat Saber, good game. Uh, one of my favorite games on the PSVR is that game. That and Firewall. I, really, I need to play Firewall again. That game is really good. Um, anyway, so another game that I played today actually on uh, Mix, uh, not on Mixer, on PS4 was uh, Ratchet and Clank. I actually went back and played a little bit of that. That game was good, man. That game is really good. It literally, literally is the movie in a video game form. Yeah, that game looks really good, just from videos I've seen. Now that's all it is. It's the same story from the movie, but in a video game. And they have the same cutscenes from the movie in the game as the cutscenes. And it's funny because when you get to those cutscenes in the game, like, you know how you can usually screenshot on the PS4 by pressing the button and taking a screenshot? Kind of like on Xbox, but on the PS4 it has that share button. And like, when you get to those screens that are like uh, <clears throat> the movie, the movie scenes or whatever... It'll get to that scene on that cutscene, and then it'll be like, broadcasting disabled. You cannot take a screenshot of this scene or whatever. And it's like hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, because yeah. they it's right because it would be like a movie rights thing. Yeah, they don't let you take video videos of those or broadcast that part of the game or whatever. So if you're broadcasting that, and yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen to you, but you cannot broadcast that part of the game. They'll just take your videos down. Yeah. It's happened to us before on YouTube. Fucking Sony. Fuck you, Sony. Anyways, um, what else, what else, what else, what else? Played on PS4. I played on... Uh, what else did I play? Any uh, Days Gone on there at all? Did you pick that up? No, I haven't picked it up. I'm going to pick it up on the cell. I thought about it. I was this close to buying it this week, but nah. Um, I want to pick up... No, I don't want to pick anything. What was I going to say? Oh, I played some Forager this week. This is a game really high, highly recommended by the people on BGO. Um, so the Mayo bought it, and he was like, Hey, Jesus, you should check this out. I think you'll like it. I started playing it, and it's it's a fun little game. It reminds me a lot of Zelda back in the day. Uh, so you're pretty much you're breaking these trees down and rocks and trees and rocks and chickens and cows and all kinds of stuff and bulls and shit. You're killing all these things, and you're, you're crafting things. You're crafting and crafting and crafting. And you're trying to get to a point where the things are crafting themselves. So I got to the point where I was able to build banks. Now the banks are making coins for me. And the coins are used to buy lands that I have to build bridges to and get to next, you know. So that's the whole point of the game. I think it's just crafting things and expanding, 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 expanding. What real interesting about this game is that it's made by one person. One guy made this in Brazil. Wow. So, cool. Shout out to him. I mean, he made it. Um, so... Yeah, I I know Ryan picked this up as well. 
um, on the Steam machines, but I didn't get a chance to check it out yet. Yeah, I was playing it last night on stream, actually, and um, I think only Ryan was the only one watching. He was like, oh, I watch you, Jesus, I want to watch this. I'm like, okay. It's it's his kind of game, right? That, maybe that top-down zone. Oh, yeah, it, it totally is his kind of, kind of game. So, I mean, yeah, so this is the type of shit Ryan is into. For me, it was cool, but um, I don't know. I don't know. Was the how was the crafting? Was it easy to do? Was it just does it get complicated later on? Or I, I mean, and, and what are you doing with all this stuff once you craft it? Is it just building material? Or uh, okay, so yeah, so like you get coins. The coins unlock new plots of land that you can mine or whatever and craft. It's like Minecraft. <laughs> okay, so like a top down Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, pretty Zelda-like. much. Yeah, you got like okay. a little hammer axe thing that goes. Tick, tick, and you break down the tree. The tree gives you seven wood. Now you use the seven wood to build a uh, whatever, like make coal, and then you use the stone that you just a broke furnace. down to make this. Yeah, and the, for- and the furnace, you, you, okay. you smelt, and you make golden bars. The golden bars, you can use those, and a bunch of the other bars, and a bunch of the other things to make a bank, and the bank makes coins, so now you don't have to worry about coins and crafting coins because the bank is making you coins. And I'm assuming it's probably going to be that way with like a lot of things. Like now you don't have to worry about this because you have it automated now to the point where like it's just making it for you. I see. Uh, making you gold parts, making you um, ignits or whatever. Like all that fucking bullshit. Um, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I'll be sure to play it this week. Fun little game. I said maybe by one person, which is kind of incredible. Anyways, other games that I played this week. On Steam. Uh, what else did I play on Steam? I think that's it. I think that's it. I think. Maybe. No. I was going to buy that one game that I keep seeing people post in the group called um, uh, Satisfactory. Oh, it's on the Epic Store? No. Yeah. Is that it? The one that... <laughs> yeah. It's the only reason I didn't buy it. This is the only reason. Really? Are you you kind of have the same feelings as I do? Well, <laughs> on that is, <laughs> I don't know what to do, man. I don't know if like what if Epic Store fails because people just are not buying into it. Yeah, well, I guess my only thing is like, do I? That wanna... is my main concern. There's going to be a point where Fortnite falls off, whether it's twenty years from now, ten years from now, or five years from now. It's a point where that falls off. And you no longer have access to your games because, I mean, what if Epic Store is not big enough to support itself? Well, I'm I'm sure then, and just play, you know, to say that, yeah, who knows what happens with that what game ha- if you what, really like that game. But then, what do you want to invest that? in another launcher? You know, and that's another, another ecosystem. To, yeah, I'm investing right now in Steam and buying games on Steam and building up my Steam library. Do I really want to start? buying stuff on epic and building it on epic i mean don't get me wrong i think that epic will be fine in the future but at the same time like right now their main bread and butter is fortnite um true yeah but that's not that's not their main cash source because i mean they do a lot of other things epic is a big company and they've been around forever now too not as big as valve which runs steam but i mean still pretty big you know like right especially at this point they're worth what and i saw that they just bought oh what did they buy wasn't trying to think of what franchise they bought just recently epic yeah so they're they're trying to expand and do all that so i don't know man Hmm. i really want to try that game though yeah it looks pretty cool just from what even the screenshots that one of our community members put in there what the point of the game is though i think it's just to automate things right so it's early access so i would assume later on you'll be able to build more things than actual machines that that automate things which i thought because i was kind of looking at that vision in that way so because right now it's just kind of automated you know factory um you know things like that where you're just like you know yeah making shit to Speaking be a factory, of, so yeah. Speaking we'll of that, <laughs> I played another game on on Steam. Crafting. Actually, this game just actually came out of. Uh, it just came out of early access. It's a game called Rise of. 
Rise of Industry on Steam. Yeah, I saw um, Paradox has been streaming that. I followed him on Twitch, and I thought, I wasn't sure if, if, if that's an existing game or if it's new. Uh, they were doing it, a charity it stream. Is, it, is a, um, it is a new game, but it is, uh, it's, been on, uh, it's been on early access. So this game is pretty cool. Um, I, I played the demo of it, so pretty much what the gist of it is, you're trying to build factories, and, like a corporation. Like you're trying to build like a like an empire, <laughs> like an industry empire, right? Your your goal is to build an empire of whatever you're making, which is everything. You can make everything. So it, it is really deep though. It looks cartoony as shit. But the graphics is kind of like a pretty cool art style. It has a pretty cool cartoony art style. But it, it, it is really deep. It's a really deep game. So you start off with like you have to buy a, a contract with the city. So the city starts bidding. Like you are against another company, and you have to outbid them. So now you outbidded them. So now you bought the contract rights to be able to manufacture, um, whatever, fucking tennis shoes or something. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Now, now you need to set up the infrastructure to manufacture tennis shoes. So you got to put in the pumps to pump the water, to send the water to the water station because you need the, this water station to do something for the city or something or for your factory. You got to build a factory. You got to build a farm. The farm does this. It grows so many, so much wheat or some shit. I don't know. I was building a bunch of roads and a bunch of fucking pipelines and fucking shit. And then, like, if, if you, like, have too much pollution from your factory, it can destroy the ecosystem around your town. It's a pretty deep game. It's really deep. It is super deep, actually. Um, and you have to, like, do all kinds of stuff, like lobby for people, like to tell, tell people, like, hey, you need to pass this law to help me fucking lower my taxes or something. You know what I mean? Get me to move to your city or some shit. You got, like, lots yeah. of little, in, like, you're pretty I much trying play. to run an empire. <laughs> you play Yeah, it? I did play the demo on this. This you, is probably about, yeah, maybe, like, three or four months ago, actually. Do you like it? I thought it was okay. I, I guess I couldn't get past that cartoony style of things, and I didn't understand what I was supposed to be doing, other than, like you said, you know, building roads, building farms, um, you know, saw mills, things like that. There and is a it, tutorial to the game. That's what I was playing first, and even though it's a tutorial, it is really fucking hard. It is. I was like, wait, what? What am I supposed to do? Yeah, like it's saying you're like, you need to do. Do this, the trucks man. automatically go to the mill after it yeah, goes to yeah. the store and the train thing? Yeah, and the store and then the trains and then the, the exporting and importing. There's no city skylines. <laughs> city skylines is like a, an automated thing, and this game is not. So I don't know. Yeah, man, that's what um, I'm used to. I, I, I think it's an okay game. It's thirty bucks. I thought about buying it, but I don't know if I'll regret it. What if I regret the purchase? I know, right? So maybe, I, you know, I would just, what I recommend, just go watch some YouTube videos, try to get some some previews from different people's perspectives. Mm, so, yeah. yeah, it's a free uh, demo for anybody that has Steam, so you can go check that out. Download Rise of Industry. Yeah, Rise of Industry. Um, besides that, what the fuck else have I played? That's really it, man. Um, yeah, that's really it. Nothing else that I've been really playing. I look forward to uh, playing some more Sea of Thieves after the podcast. And for the stream, hell yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. Stream all night, Sea of Thieves. And for the battle against the GFNG podcast. I don't think you can battle them. Uh, dude, if, they, if we're going to battle them, they're so screwed. They're so screwed because I'm a master at that COT shit at this point. So, and, and you know Jonathan, what that means? Jonathan can't get his bearings right. I'm like, Jonathan, you, what? 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 Uh, what? I'm like, Jonathan, Jonathan, drop the anchor, Jonathan, drop the anchor. I'm fucking yelling at him for like five minutes. And he's like, oh shit. And we crash into the island. He's like, what are you doing, Jesus? I'm like, I told you to drop the anchor like 30 seconds ago. We would not have been in this situation, man. Like, what the hell? He's like, oh, I don't know what's going on. So, yeah. so basically, we're going to have it's going to be me, you, Pork Chop Poo, and who else on our team? Blaze Experience. We are going to. Got, just, oh, yeah. I'm just going to play music the entire time. The I'm going to do nothing. Just <laughs> Blaze. Sit on the ship. Yeah, Blaze asked me. He's like, yeah, can I be on your guys' crew? I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Can I come on our crew? Yeah, we'll destroy GFNG. GFNG can fuck off. And Alan, you can stop shaking now. It's okay. 
Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of fun playing that, though, man. And it, that game is so good with, like, people that talk to you. Um, so, yeah. Happy, happy, happy. Um, anyways. That's all I really played this week, honey. Um, uh, I think that's all I played. I'm pretty sure that's all I played. And no, uh, no Division 2 this week? Not really, no. I played a little bit of it earlier on Sunday, um, but that's really it. Uh, yeah, that's really it. Great. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, I yeah. played only a little bit of that Division 2. I was not feeling very good, I think, when I messaged you Sunday. Mm-hmm. Oh, I felt like shit. It might have, could have been allergies, but uh, did I make it to World Tier 5? Jeez, I think I did, and then that's when I quit. Um, after, yeah, after just playing the hell out of that game. Yeah, World Tier 5 went through and just did more of those, uh, more main missions. And uh, man, now I'm already, I'm already dropping the name of the, uh, the other type of missions that you do. Wow. But, um, yeah, I just took a break from that that game and just been playing uh oh uh Mortal Kombat 11. Been playing that with my son and he's pretty good you know using a controller. I'm I'm not a fighting game guy, so we did kind of play a uh, co-op, you know, one screen co-op, which is kind of nice and then he's just kind of teaching me like like the different combos and kills that you can do and and then um that game's that game's a ton of fun. And also tried that again by myself today, just kind of going through the tutorial to kind of learn it. But I'm just I'm just too old, Jesus. I just can't get those buttons down right, you know. So, but I'm just doing like a lot of blocking and stuff like that. But um, yeah, doing the story mode. So highly recommend it. That game looks phenomenal running on Xbox One 4K. It looks great. And uh, oh, you know what I fired up today was a uh, Borderlands Two. I decided that because I downloaded the 4K HDR assets and I think that the game holds up really well. Uh, ended up playing that with uh, just some random people. I think I did have one friend, Xbox Live, join in and made it all the way to Sanctuary. And um, yeah, it still still plays very well. Love getting all the new guns and stuff like that. So Claptrap clap trap cracks me the hell up probably the funniest character in that game. So they added new guns to the game with the last update for the 4K or whatever you said? No, no, it's all the, it's just the same vanilla game. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, no, I don't think there's just the 4K assets. I want to play are. it on uh The thing is I have that game on everything. I have it on fucking I have it on my fucking PC, I have it on the Xbox, I have it on the PS4. Yeah. I have it on everything. But I think the PS4 is the best version because I would in VR in that. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. So, like, being in that world is actually pretty cool. Because it's, like, one of the it's one of the few games in, in PSVR that is, like, a full... It's, like, a full fucking thing or whatever, like, a full game, you know what I mean? Like, Skyrim is a full game in VR. Um, Borderlands is the same way. It's the actual fucking game. It's the full game just in VR. You're just in there, you know? And you got your little health bar on the bottom of your HUD, and then like on the top right, you got the mini map. And it's kind of hard to really see the mini map. I didn't think about how hard it is to pay attention to that map when you're in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because like, it just shows. Uh, yeah, it just, I always show like the red dots of where enemy yeah, places like are. Yeah, like I always thought, like man, <clears throat> like it would like for like the military or something, or for drivers or for pilots or whatever, it would be cool to like have a HUD on your visor to see a map to where the fuck you're going. But that shit is hard to pay attention to when you're getting shot at. It's like, who the fuck would pay attention to that mini-map on their HUD when fucking getting shot at like this? This is insane. You can't focus on it, dude. Um, so, yeah. It's fucking nuts. It's useful, you know, just, just playing regular vanilla because then you'll see, like, is you'll see, like, is there a red dot behind me? You know, because it won't, it's not going to show you where, like you said, where you're getting shot from. So, do I need to find cover so my my shields could regenerate. Um, but, um, yeah, it was just like going through that campaign again. It's just, it's just so smooth. And the way it's set up is just awesome. Yeah. Um, and I had people drop it in and coming in and going, yeah, well, I just picked this up today. So I'm going to run through the campaign. I was like, sweet, let's do it. So 
I don't know, but then I had some connection issues and but I, it was flawless. Like it didn't it didn't kick me out of the game since it is like that offline style game. So yeah. it just kept going and then more people would join in and um yeah. <laughs> Shit's badass, man. Awesome. Yeah. Um played a did I play any more World War Z? Uh, maybe a little bit of it. Hmm. I didn't play too much, so um not much to say there. World War Z. Yeah. And just some more just cause for just grinding, getting through the world. Definitely. And, uh, unlock it. I just wanted to shoot shit, that's all. Just, just kinda chilling on racing games as well, so yeah. Mm. But that's that's all I played this week. Awesome. That's cool, man. All right. All right. Anyways, people, let's get into video game news. Speaking of Borderlands, it's news time. Borderlands news. Pity, 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 Our pity, friend pity. over at Gearbox. What's his name? Randy Pitchford? Yeah, that's <laughs> C- him. The CEO of The Gearbox. magician. The magician, yeah. He was on Twitter the other day. I followed him on Twitter. And he's on Twitter over here like, hey, uh... Uh, he was pissed off at um, a few publications. I think it was Polygon or, or PC. Which one was it? PC Gamer or Polygon? He was pissed off at one of them because he was on stage that day talking about we're not going to have microtransactions in our game, right? Like in the new Borderlands 3. And everyone's like, yeah, everyone's clapping. And he's like, but we are still going to sell skins. Like cosmetic items. So, of course, the video game journalist websites went out there and said, Borderlands 3 says no microtransactions, and then turns around and starts selling microtransactions. And he was like, what the fuck, you motherfuckers? He was pissed off at them, you know? He said, like, that's yeah. not what I fucking meant, you know? Like, you fucking idiots. Like, he was pissed off at the fucking <laughs> at the website. He was like, you fucking assholes. Like... This is not what I meant. You guys are stupid. Fuck you guys. He was really mad. He was like salty as fuck on Twitter just going off on him. Damn. You know, he doesn't give a shit. Like, that guy is crazy. <laughs> he is. Yeah, he has no... <laughs> very little filter. Yeah, but, sure. uh, but yeah, he was going off on him about that. And, yeah, so, like, I get, I get his point. Like, I get where he's coming from. But, I mean, it is a microtransaction, technically. You know what I mean? Like, a cosmetic, even though it's just a cosmetic... Is a microtransactions. A microtransaction is you being able to buy anything in the game. That's a microtransaction. Yeah. But so, what so he should exactly. have said. Yeah. What he should have said is there's no loot boxes in our game. But there is microtransactions. With skins. Correct. But micro- see the word micro- it's a marketing tra- tactic. The microtransaction right? word sounds bad <laughs> tied to any game right. at this point. You know, like thanks to fucking EA, that word is like you don't want that attached to your game at all. You don't want those words microtransaction or loot box attached to your game. So people are like trying to say we're not gonna have that in our game, but we are gonna sell you cosmetic items. How do you do that? You know? Right, so they. I wonder if they intentionally, they intentionally took it out of context and kind of ran with it, right, for clicks and views. Yeah. Because I know Game Informer was a little more respectable about it, you know, but obviously didn't quite agree with his marketing tactic as well, the way he, the way he phrased it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know, man. So we'll see what happens with that. I know they're gonna have obviously skins, but no loot boxes or whatever. So you don't get an advantage playing by paying, becoming a well, or being a well and paying a lot of money. So I guess we're not gonna have like those. So the, well, they'll probably do keys like they normally do. I think that's where you go to like. Ugh, how did they do it? I think it was. Well, didn't they have like the in-game section of where to enter the keys for the, the skins? But those were skin colors, right? Not actual skins. I don't know how it worked before. Yeah. Like in Borderlands, I could probably check. I was just playing it today, but you enter like another code. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's different now because you know it's 2019 and you wear a different kind of jacket instead of the same jacket without the different colors. Hmm. Yeah. So. Anyways, there's that. And in more news, let's go on to some more news, Gunny. More news. 
What is? Let's talk about Fortnite. So Fortnite um, on PlayStation, some PlayStation 4 players are being compensated for not receiving the Fortnite in- Inferno pack when they purchased it. Apparently, says here, Epic Games released quite a few packs of Fortnite, which are available for purchase in the store. And blah, blah, blah. For recently, you can buy the, the Inferno pack. So this pack was first available in only some countries like Japan and Singapore a few days earlier than the rest of the world, but it's now available for everyone to purchase. So you're going to purchase it for nineteen ninety nine US dollars. So that's like across the world, that's different, right? Like different fucking pounds. Currency, yeah. Pounds is like 15 pounds or whatever, a little bit over that. Um, Canada is a little bit more. Australia, a little bit more. Europe, a little bit more. New Zealand, more. Mm-hmm. And it says here that some PS4 players were reporting that upon port- upon purchasing the pack, they were not seeing the Inferno skin in their lockers and the Inferno challenges were not available to complete. There have been a few other issues with the pack with some players reporting that even though they received the skin, the challenges would say currently unavailable and others saying that the skin was removed from their lockers before being added back. Um, so now the people that had these issues, and apparently these issues have been resolved, uh, they're not going to receive... They are going to receive 500 V-Bucks, pretty much, for that fuck up there. Some, some kind of fuck. Good. So there you go. Um, yeah. Yeah. The only other challenge pack that's been released in Fortnite was the Fallen Love Ranger pack. Yeah. I remember that pack. That was for, like, Valentine's Day, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I do remember that one. Yeah. yeah. So there's that for the Fortniters out there. I know there's quite a few, quite a few of you out there. In other news, let's talk about Rage 2 since we were talking about PlayStation having issues with their loot. Uh, Rage 2 has now gone gold and we got some PS4 Pro details for you. Dun, dun, dun. So Rage yeah. 2 releasing, I believe here pretty soon, right? Like I think uh, in what, three days, four days? Ten days. 14th, gonna be May 14th. Oh, 14th. Okay. May 14th, releasing May 14th. Oh man, I'm probably not gonna buy this. Or should I buy this? <sighs> Is this one of those epic only games? Yeah, I, I believe it is. Or is it Borderlands? So I'm gonna get it on Xbox. Epic only. Is yeah. Rage Two Epic exclusive? Rage Two Epic exclusive. Hmm. Rage. Two. Oh, this is Bethesda, right? So yeah, I wonder if they're. Oh, it's not an Epic Games exclusive. So it'll probably be on the on the Bethesda launcher. Borderlands 3 is the one that's... Yes. Right, that's an Epic exclusive. Yeah, so Rage 2 is not an Epic exclusive. Borderlands 3 is... That's actually a good... I might actually end up buying this because I have a few bucks in my... in my Steam Wallet machine. <gasps> or or, so, or one of you can gift it if you want me to play it. Just gift it to me on Steam. Jesus Walks a Lot is my thing on there. Yeah. <laughs> Send it. Send it over. I'll play it. Why not? Rage 2... PC, Steam, Jesus Walks a Lot. Anyways, people. Uh, so Rage 2 has gone gold. And of course, the PlayStation 4 Pro has some enhancements. Um, unfortunately, the game will not be running in 4K. But it's going to push the frame rate cap up to 60 frames per second. Uh, that is double the standard of the PS4 standard. So if you're playing the game on a hobo PS4, uh, which most of you probably are. I mean, if you don't... If you already had the system, there's really not a lot of whole reason to upgrade it unless you got like a 4K TV, you had extra money, you traded it in, you traded in your PS4 towards the new one for some crazy deal and you got a good price or whatever on it, or you're just stupid like me and you sold off your PS4s and you just bought a new one fucking five times. Um, yeah. So anyways. No doubt they're going to continue to work on this, but I think it looks like at launch it will not be in 4K. No, I mean, it, it'll probably be upscaled quite a bit, and it probably won't look better. Probably, it's probably going to be running, like, fucking 1440p or so, 14 whatever the fuck. Well, wait a minute. So here's my question. When they do get this running in 4K, will they have to drop it down to 30? Or, or is oh, that it? This is shit. it. Yeah, maybe right? This, See, I never maybe, thought maybe, of that. Maybe the reason it, it has to be that. The reason it's not in 4K is because it needs to be running at 60 frames. They prefer See, that's that. going to be a slippery slope, right? Because we're going to be like, look, we're knocking you down 30 frames, but we're getting you 4K. I wouldn't want that. That's what Xbox does all the but time. But I guess then, I guess, to think about it, if you do have a PS4 Pro, you can turn that feature off. Can't you? 
to say, isn't there a button on PS4? Well, there's a thing on the PS4, like, for example, okay, let's say I on my PS4 go down there and, and I set my thing to 1080p. The PS4 will sometimes perform better streaming the or or like displaying the game in 1080p than it will at 4k or whatever whatever right. the fuck 4k is is 2360 or whatever the fuck it's at whatever the 4k is compared to the 1080p if i like say i want to go i go downstairs and i'm like uh drop name a random stupid game like god of war or horizon zero dawn to 1080p sometimes in some certain games that struggle will actually get better frame rates, way better frame rates and better performance at Mm -hmm. 1080p because on the PS4, unlike the Xbox, when the PS4, when you tell it to go to 1080p, it only does 1080p. It doesn't upscale. It doesn't super sample. It doesn't do shit. It's just displaying the shit at 1080p. Unlike the Xbox One X, if I go downstairs to my TV and I switch my display from 4K to 1080p, it always tries to like super sample the game. So right. the performance in games does not get any better. If my game is running at 30 frames a second in 4K, it is going to run at 30 frames a second and uh, <laughs> 1080p on the Xbox. But on PS4 Pro, it's different. If you drop the shit down to 1080p, some games will actually perform way better because the hardware gets freed up and the, the console knows what to do with that extra power or whatever. You know, It makes the games better. Mm-hmm. One game that was a huge example of that was Anthem. So Anthem, you remember the demo on the Xbox One? We were getting around 30 frames a second. Uh, sometimes it would dip. On the PS4 Pro, you were getting 30 frames a second with a lot of dipping. Like, uh, like for example, on the Xbox One X, on the demo, you would get like 20 frames, sometimes 22. Like, it was like a slideshow. Like, holy shit, this is bad. So when I went to play it on my PS4 Pro, I actually told my PS4 Pro, "Hey, display this." Display everything at 1080p. And when I was playing Anthem, my game was actually running at like 45 frames a second instead of 30 because of the extra performance because I dropped down the resolution, which is super cool. Which is probably good because it knew to lock it at that 1080, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. Yeah. Or the Xbox wants to give it more power. Yeah, the Xbox, no matter what you do to it, it's always trying to super sample or give it more power or give it more... Make it look nicer all the time, because that's yeah. the whole point of the Xbox. You know, you want games to look nice, but yeah, you know. I so, understand. That's the yeah. only thing it is. Um, Interesting, yeah. Just choices you have. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Anyways, so that's Rage Two. Speaking of the PS4 Pro, you can now get a free PlayStation Classic when you go buy a PS4 Pro from Best Buy. So if you go to Best Buy to try to buy a PlayStation 4 Pro system, they're actually going to give you one of those free little mini. PlayStation ones. You want one, Gunny? I do. I w- well, not so much. I mean, there wasn't <laughs> like the games that I saw in there. Yeah. Like, uh, trying to think, there was uh, what's the one like crash up car game that I used to play back on PlayStation One? Crash Team Racing. No, I forgot what it was, but I thought, man, I want like the oh, second Oh, Twisted one. Metal? Twisted Metal. I thought, yeah. I, want, I want Twisted Metal, I was Metal thinking too. Crash Car Game. I'm like, oh, he means like crashing cars. Oh, okay. Yeah. My <laughs> brother used to kick my ass in that game uh, playing, <laughs> playing couch co-op, was, you know? That game was a lot of fucking fun. I remember being the stupid ice cream truck. Yeah. Sweet oh, I used to get whatever. wrecked in that yeah, thing. Yeah, was dope. That game was amazing. That game was cool, though. The older, the newer games of that game was they were super cool too. Like on the PS2, they had like newer versions of that game. They were pretty cool too. Yeah, a system I missed all entirely. But uh, no, I just want the PS4 Pro. Just give me that. <laughs> I want it. Keep, keep that PS Classic, bro. It could become a collector's item in the future. I doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah, seriously. I'll tell the wife tomorrow when we're we're going to the store. Mm, we stop yeah. by Best Buy, please. Yeah. <laughs> in other news um, Xbox have added, has added a couple more titles to its backwards compatibility um, now reaching over 600 games um, here pretty soon they're currently at 589 games with these two new games being added to the list so I'm pretty sure by E3 or next month they're probably going to be like and hey, we're almost at 600 games that'll be their big thing on like the screen you know what I mean Backwards compatibility. Yeah. 
that reminds me, I did play... Fucking E3 uh, is next month. Damn, I just remembered that. Fuck. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. That is crazy, Gunny. Damn. We're halfway through the year, dude. Just about. Yeah, jeez. My birthday marks the halfway point. That's June 18th, everyone. Send me gifts. Send me all the gifts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did play that uh, that one game that was free free with gold, the Earth Defense Force. Yeah, that Insect. game was fucking good. Insect Armageddon, there was the... Sing- I think that was single player, though. I was looking for one today that I thought it was... I do own 2025, but yeah. I have the disc here somewhere. I just got to pop it in the the Xbox X. Yeah. should be compatible. Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge, is becoming backwards compatible today, as well as Trials Evolution. That became back- backwards compatible on May 2nd, actually. Both of them. May 2nd, not today. Why did I say today? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Backwards compatible. Sweet. Wait, hold on. More backwards compatible games. Holy shit. More? Oh, no. No. Same game list. What the fuck? That article was written yesterday. Hmm. Hmm. Anyways, let's move on here to more, uh, more stuff here. On the Xbox front, there's some stuff that has disappeared from the Xbox store. Gunny. Let me tell you the following things that have disappeared from the Xbox store you can no longer buy. As of May 2019, three days ago, you can no longer buy these. Lego? Game of Thrones, a Telltale game series. Minecraft Hmm. Story Mode, a Telltale game series. Minecraft Story Mode Season 2. Episode 1 is still available for free, but you cannot buy the rest of the season, which I kind of fucked up there. I should have bought that. Uh, the Walking Dead Collection, the Telltale series, you can no longer buy. WWE 2K15, 2K16, and 2K17 are no, no longer available for purchase. As well as uh, on the 360, you can no longer buy the Game of Thrones game. You can no longer buy the Minecraft Story. You can no longer buy a game called Zombie Apocalypse. Uh, the Jackbox Party Pack has taken off the 360 store. On Windows 10, pretty much the Minecraft Story modes... I've got taken off The Walking Dead. Everything The Walking Dead on Windows 10 got removed. Interesting. Yeah, a lot of licensed properties. And we know from Telltale. So I wonder if those are, are they going to, the assets are just frozen for like some kind of, like a auction or, yeah, I'm just curious if they just kind of go back to their perspective license holders. Well, that one company ended up buying the rights to finish that last season, right? And then they did. And then... Correct. What is, what is happening? What is happening? What is happening there? Like, do they continue the right? Continue to use the rights to make a new season, or do they? Was that really just it? I think that was it. So they, I assume they need to like reapply for a new license if they want to continue on. Huh. Okay. And so, I, who knows what's going on in the boardroom? If they're just kind of considering their options, so all right, we're going to make any money out of this if we continue with it. Yeah. Or is that it? But Gunny, Interesting. let me tell you something. That was some serious potato talk. Potato talk? That was some serious potato talk right there, Gunny. <laughs> okay. Explain. Microsoft has released a new list of acceptable trash talk on Xbox Live. <laughs> yeah. They have updated the user terms Darn of you. service. They've actually updated their terms of service for Xbox Live. And with that new update to their terms of service, um, you can now be careful with your trash talk. Because they acknowledge that trash talking takes place and the new community standards for Xbox, they have given examples of what acceptable trash talking is. While they're unintentionally hilarious, they aren't racist, sexist, or insult any other group. Acceptable trash talks includes the following phrases, Gunny. (laughs) Let's go here. Phrase I'm one. a few of those. Okay. Get destroyed. Can't believe you thought you were on my level. <gasps> go, Gunny. Your turn. Your turn, Gunny. Go. Like you said, that was some serious potato aim. Get wrecked. These well, are your dad jokes. Only reason you went positive was you spent all game camping. Try again, kid. <laughs> Cheap win. Come at me when you actually drive. Without running cars off the road. Sick burn there, bro. Sick burn. 
Whoa. That sucked. Get good and then come back when your KD's over one. Boom. However, guys, however, they've also put a list of phrases that will get you banned. <laughs> An unacceptable behavior. So let's get to it. Phrase one that will get you banned on Xbox Live. Get fucked. Can't believe you thought you were on my level. Hey, bitch. That was some serious potato aim. Get wrecked, trash. Go, gun, go. Let's see. Cheap win. Totally expected that from a Mexican. <gasps> Fuck. How read the dare article. you? Just oh, read the my God. How just dare article. you say that, Gunny? How fucking dare you? This is for educational purposes, folks. Just so you know. <laughs> Disclaimer. You suck. Get out of my country. Maybe they'll let you back in when your KD's over one. <laughs> well, here, Trump. I was born here, okay? Who the fuck says that? <laughs> That's my kids, fault. kids, I'm, I'm uh, very they must immature. Have, these have to be things that somebody said on Xbox Live, and they got it. They picked it up through their microphone. Because, you know, everything you say on Xbox Live is recorded by them. They record everything. They know what you say in your parties, your private messages you send people. You're being monitored all the time. So I'm assuming somebody said this like on a fucking lobby for Call of Duty or something. You suck. Get out of my country. <laughs> Maybe they'll let you back in when your KD's over one. Jesus. <laughs> that's probably... And these are like tame. Like the ones that we're reading oh here. Oh my god, Obviously yeah. we know as gamers. That's, these are pretty light. These are uh, pretty light disses, guys. Somewhat offensive. Very offensive. But uh, yeah. There's yeah. a lot more worse. They're just trying to be not shock anybody with something more that's terrible. Right. So in this article. be careful what you say on Xbox Live now. You cannot use words that are racist, sexist, or insult any group. What does any other group mean? Like what is what is a group what defines a group? Define a group, Danny. I don't know what a group is. I guess I mean, it would be more so than a race is a race. A race is a race. I mean a sex is a sex, so that's like male, female, you know, transgender or whatever. Like all those are your your sex, right? Where you define yourself as gay or whatever. And any other group, what does that mean? So we have race covered, groups of sexual orientation covered. Any other group? Religion? Bisexual? Religion. I guess religion is a group, right? Um, yeah. I mean, I can't trash talk PlayStation people? They were just speaking in general. Correct. I can't say like, fuck you, PlayStation motherfucker. Bitch ass fanboy. <gasps> <gasps> no. Ban oh hammer. fuck, ban him. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Xbox Live ended the, the article or their terms of service here by saying the following quote: "Be yourself." I cuss a lot, though Microsoft. I can't be myself if you guys don't let me cuss. It says here, "Be yourself, but not at the expense of others." If you're looking for a place on the internet to be overly edgy or get a rise out of people. Xbox isn't the place for you. Do you really think people are going to... You know what? So I'm. here's what I'm thinking. What are you thinking, Danny? Is there's a, probably a group of assholes. <gasps> Sorry, group of assholes. Whoa, whoa. Calling are you, you, are you general, generalizing the group right now? How I dare am. you? How I, dare I'm you? I'm totally singling them out right now. Why are you insulting the single group? How here's, fucking here's dare you? Let me tell you why. Because they probably... You people... <laughs> They went to Xbox or however this even played out. And they're just like, so what are the rules? You got to be more specific. <gasps> so then I, I think they probably somebody at Microsoft definitely took the time out to lay out all these rules. So you're right? thinking somebody got banned. <laughs> yes, and they probably, bitched, yeah. There you go. Somebody got and, banned. And they bitched enough at Microsoft or made YouTube video or something. And we're like, fuck you, Microsoft banned me because I said this. What are the rules? And the rules don't say that if I say this, and then they had to unban that person and let them back on Xbox Live. But they're like, you know what, motherfucker? We're going to rewrite the rules right now. Right now, we're going to rewrite these fucking rules. Or it's probably like just a law like we have like within you know this great country of ours that or each city and municipality. You know, somebody thought, okay, now there's got to be a new law. So. Mm. Right, and they just keep adding and adding and adding to them. So, 
Overall, yeah. though, I mean, I, I I think we tend to follow the same rules, sort of. I mean, even on the podcast, we don't tend to be racist, sexist. I mean, we insult everyone, but that's just kind of what we do. So we try to be equally yeah, offensive to everyone. I try to be equally offensive to everyone, including myself. Yeah, same here. Especially myself. <laughs> and yeah, and news. I can't... I mean, there's no other time that I think I've ever... I've never even joined in on insulting other people you know i mean unless we're when we're in our own group you know this jesus right we're we're Mm -hmm. all in the party and it's me and it's you and it's jonathan and it's eric and if i'm talking shit to like alan maybe and alan maybe reports me i could get fucking banned you hear that alan just fuck you alan you'll be you'll be uh i'm gonna you'll be you banned alan i'm gonna get you banned fucking get alan banned for all his shit talking he does. Submit it by A, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to find out at you. Jesus we're said this. House we're going to bleep, bleep. <laughs> Let me talk to you about something, Gunny. Xbox Live has a real problem. A real big problem. And I've actually been dealing with this problem all week. And that is the problem of a spam bot. Fucking spam bots oh, are I everywhere on Xbox Live. Let me tell you right now. Let me go. Every time I log in, it's like... Let me open it up real quick. See how Bebop many... Bebop Willie 01 says hi. Yeah. Let me tell you what these people said to me. Change Bat 10645 messaged me just two days ago, or yesterday, and they said hello. On top of that, I had like seven other messages. I reported them on to Xbox. You know, I usually just... Fucking bo- I hope these are not like podcast listeners. They're just fucking No, awkward. because <laughs> I did add some podcast listeners. And the easiest... Okay, not this person again. But, um, no, I go to their profile, and if I see yeah. over you know a certain amount of gamer score, then obviously I'm going to... Well, well what if that. a podcast listener just got an Xbox, and they're listening to the podcast because they just got an Xbox, they have no gamer score, and they're like, oh, man, these guys are my friends. And then you're over there, ban- you're over there blocking them, Gunny. What the fuck? Yeah, well, look here. It says... I got this one the other day. Rolling Jam 297679 says, Yay, someone to talk to. I went down to options and ban. Well, no, I actually went to the profile and it saw the zero gamer score. Yeah. And then I went get good and then I blocked him. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Gunny, I mean, that's a big problem on Xbox Live. There's a big um, problem with bots. Um,. So yeah, it says here that um, Microsoft allows says here Microsoft allows Xbox Live accounts to send a limited number of messages every day to other users, and we are aware that some accounts are using this functionality to deliver spam messages. We are continue, continuously working on ways to prevent the spread of spam messaging to our users through a variety of methods, including removal of these accounts. We encourage members to report inappropriate messages by following the guidance enforcement Xbox.com. Yeah, and I think they do really good with, like, um, where uh, we've got a community member, like, he sent... You know how you can just, like, you can do your... Record your 30 seconds of game, and then you can send them out to a, you know, a group of people. So, one of the cool features, I think, um, especially for kids, you know, and, and as a parent, is it'll even let you know, like, hey, this could contain some offensive content. You know, do you really want to watch this video? Yeah. So that's good that they that some this is part of you know the new Xbox and I'm sure it's the same on PlayStation. So oh, on PlayStation is the same way. Every time I log in, dude, I was like, you have a new message from this. Hey, sexy. Hey, I'm lonely. I want to talk to you. Hey, I want to make friends. I want to make friends with you. It's like what? What? Like, I don't get the point of these bots either. What's the point of them? Like, what? What are they? They're just like steal people's information. You know what I think? Who was it? We had somebody on that said that if you respond and then they send you back a link and it's just to oh, go. Oh, they send you one of those links to steal your info and shit, huh? Yeah, okay, like, okay. oh, go to this link here to get free money or free gift cards or something yeah, stupid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fucking shit. No, it, but it was funny. I think I was watching a YouTube video and then it was like they were totally trolling them on the video. Yeah. Like, there was kind of this back and forth thing, but I think it was automated, you know? Oh, it is. It's totally automated because one of them, I actually, the other day, I was, this one said hello, and I was like, are you a bot? 
And they were like, oh, hi, I'm having someone kind of lonely tonight. I need someone to talk to. And that's all they said was, they didn't even like respond to the fucking question. I asked them, who the fuck are you? Are you a bot? And they were, right. like, they were like, oh, hey, I'm lonely tonight. I'm just kind of sitting here bored on Xbox. And I found your profile and I think you're kind of cool. And I want to chat. And I was like, I'm calling the cops. That's what I wrote. <laughs> and it was like, oh, how old are you? Not, it was like, oh, nice. How old are you? I'm fucking whatever. How old are you and where do you live? And I was like, scary. I'm calling the cops. I'm, I'm five years. No, I, I was like, I told him that I was like a 10 years old or something. <laughs> it's like, I'm 10 years old and I'm calling the cops. And, and as soon as you tell them that you're like under 18, the, like the, the bot recognizes that number. And if it's Weird. under and if it's under eighteen, the shit will stop messaging you. It'll stop. It'll be like, oh, sorry, and it'll just stop. Weird, yeah. Because it knows that it's illegal. To, like you know, fucking be talking to kids and shit, right? Like if they tell you to right. stop, you stop talking to them. But like it knows that, like they know that, so they program these fucking bots to like stop talking to you if you tell them like, I'm seven years old. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, seven is not eighteen. Abort, abort mission, and just say yeah. sorry. And then like, okay. Cops will be knocking at my door here, wherever they are. Yeah. It just stops. Price so like, that's what I always, always fuck with them, and I was telling them, like, one of them, I told them, I'm calling the cops, like, seven times in a row. And it just kept asking me questions. Like, it just kept going, like, if I was talking to it, but I wasn't. And, like, it was obviously a bot. But, but yeah, like, I don't know, get the point of these bots. I don't understand why people make them or what they do. I guess just for suckers, like maybe somebody will bite one of like, these times, you know? I'm assuming, right? Like if they send out to one million people. But I mean, what do they get out of these people? Like credit card numbers? Or for, what do they get out of them? Money? Yeah, I mean, like so we see kids do that with like some of these Fortnite coins, right? Oh, go to the website, you yeah, where you okay. say like, hey, go get these. We'll get you all the V-Bucks, kid. Because you look at it this way. Like, yeah. okay, my kid has... A Steam account, all right. He's got, um, he's got his iOS, you know, his Apple account all over his iPad, right? Yeah. But, but I mean, the one thing that's not connected, I guess, is a credit card or a debit card. That's the one thing that, because he can do anything, right? Just go on there, sure, I'll sign up everything for free. Yeah. Here's my email. Yeah, I'll sign up for everything. But then they can't get anything if they don't have you know, that bank card information, and that's what they're after. Mm, You're right. Yep. But, yeah. Anyways, yeah, that's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. You're right. So, be careful out there. Be careful out there, people. Be careful with... Another thing I want to to warn people about, this is, like, just a personal message from Jesus warning you people out there. Be careful with credit card skimmers. They're really hard to spot. They do that Gas stations, right? On the and islands? Gas stations, ha- they're notorious for it. Gas stations are the worst for them. They, they literally put these little card skimmers. They look just like a card reader. It looks just like the one that's supposed to be on the fucking fuel pump. But, like, you'll never even notice it. You just put your card in there, you pull it out, and that fucking thing is stealing your information and sending it off to this person. And this person's getting all your card information your fucking numbers, your your security code, yep. everything, the date on the card, the name on the card, the number on the card. And then they turn around, use like some shit at home to make a replica card, just like your card, put your information that the thing stole off of you on that new card. So that new card is pretty much the same card you have. That's right. Except they own it. And then they go on Amazon, usually it's either Amazon or any website that has like a dollar purchase. Any website. It could be anything. It could be fucking Payless. I don't care what Kmart, Walmart, a fucking the red one one time I got my information was stolen and somebody used it on fucking Red Cross donation. <laughs> they donated a dollar okay. to they donated a dollar to the Red Cross to verify that my card was working and then went ahead and spent like five hundred bucks on it. Till I caught, till I caught it, and, and then the fucking bank was like, "You owe us five hundred dollars." I'm like, "Fuck you!" But anyways, this happened to me a couple of weeks ago. I get a call from my bank. My it's like a text message, right? Like my bank texts me, and it's like, "Hey, uh, we see that you're at, are you at a Walmart right now, trying to buy like sixty dollars worth of shit at Walmart Supercenter number sixty something?" And I was like, 
no. And it was like, okay, we've blocked this transaction, but we think your account has been compromised. Please call us. So I log into my fucking banking app. And the first thing I see on my banking app is like a fucking something called Serena or something. It was like a purchase for $1. Huh. That was like in the morning. It was like in the morning or late at night, like at midnight. So purchase online for a dollar. And that day they were at Walmart trying to buy things with my card. Like, Why did they do the test first? I don't, I don't understand the dollar well, test. The, well, the dollar test is to make sure that the card actually works, that it goes through. Oh, so maybe if somebody has like 30, 40 cards or whatever? Yes. So they have like they have like fifty. So there's people that do this all day long. They just steal your card information from a hundred people. Say fifty people use a card skimmer. They make ten new cards for today. Out of those ten new, uh, well, they don't even sell them. They just buy things with them. So what they do is they make ten new cards, Gunny, in an hour, right? They make the ten cards. In that one hour, they'll go to like, like I said, fucking Red Cross, Amazon, buy things for one dollar. $1 $1 items, just buy them, or eBay even, and they make sure that the purchase goes through to a bogus address. They'll send the, send this item to a bogus address. It's a dollar item. Like, sometimes if you ever receive a random package from Amazon, it's because of this. Uh. People buy something for a dollar off of Amazon, or $2, or $4, or $5. They'll send this package to your house. They pick a random address, send the package to your house, and then what they do with that card now is they know it works so they go to the store and try to use it as a credit card they run it as credit like hey uh so oh, they, yeah. don't, they don't know the fucking pin number to it they'll run it as credit run it as credit yeah yeah so like Good hey can I, yeah so like my have american express that's who was calling me the other day and they're like hey you you uh you just run it as credit it's a fucking american express card you just run it it's, it's fucking credit right so they were trying to do that and my bank blocked it so like be careful out there people that shit's a real like Big thing this country is dealing with right now is fucking credit card scammers. Like, these fucking yeah. skimmers that are on the machines steal your information, and these fucking scammers go and buy shit with your shit. And there's some things where – now, I worked for Brinks for 10 years, and I did a lot of lot of ATMs. But I never did – I never once saw, like, any skimmers because uh, yeah. I know a lot of it is they try to get – but the ones that I did were all Bank of America, Wells, Fel- Wells Fargo, so all the big banks. But yeah. They try to get some of the smaller ones, you know? Oh, yeah. They try to get, like, ATMs that are, like, either at a, like at a carnival. That's the perfect time yeah, to do it. Yeah, that's a good place to get it. And the other thing, too, is there's sometimes you can't do anything about it is, like, sometimes mine gets it at, like, a, you know, like, Safeway or Rayleigh's, like, these larger mm-hmm. grocery chains. But those are just uh, basically what, from what I understand from my credit union is that they're just weak infrastructures, you know? So yeah. Yeah, monitor your account. That's the thing, the key too. monitor it. Look at your balance every day. All you the know? time, every day, just log into it. Look at your fucking balance. Make sure your money's there. Cause that shit gets spent overnight. You're fucked. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta deal with the bank. Fucking. And 99% of the time I've noticed that even my credit union, they're just, they're on top of it right away. They're just like, Oh yeah, we saw it. We blocked it. You're, Card's been canceled. We're sending you a new yeah, one. Yeah. Come get one. I'm glad my yeah. bank was on top of it. They were like, hey, motherfucker, we were right on top of this shit. Boom. Like, I was like, thank you, fucking guys, for having those text alerts. Because, yeah, the Walmart, I looked up the Walmart. It was like in Tennessee or something. <laughs> Some guy in Tennessee. Like, yeah, Captain, I get that too. I get that too. Like, other states. I'm just like, what? Yeah. No, I'm here in like, California. Ca- Captain Hook in Tennessee is trying to use my card. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's horrible man. gamers. Yeah, guy. Dude, it's just fucking crazy, man, how like people do that shit. But yeah, that was just a little PSA, people. Keep your shit safe. Anyways, another news. A Plague Tale Innocence. So that's a new game uh, coming out to Xbox. I believe it's coming to PC and PS4 as well. But anyways, A Plague Tale Innocence. That's the story about a brother and a sister living through the plague in like the medieval times. Uh, it's actually going to run, Gunny, at 4K. <gasps> so, yeah, this is a story about Amicia and her little brother, Hugo. They're both orphans, and they're on the run from the terrifying Inquisition. <gasps> Our young heroes will need to survive against an even greater danger. Supernatural swarms of rats that appeared with the Great Plague. Infecting cities and countryside alike. So you're going to have to be out running rats and killing them or whatever. I said, sure. While well, the game is shaping up to be an interesting experience, today developer Asobo Studio discussed what the players can expect on the system on the Xbox One X. Dun, 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 dun. 
Mm. As with many other titles nowadays, the team confirmed that it runs at a 4K resolution on Microsoft's newest console. This means that the title should look incredibly crisp. It says your Xbox One players can look forward to a 4K resolution given unparalleled definition to landscapes, people, and the horrors of a Plague Tales world. While the title runs at a 4K resolution, it is unclear if this is native 4K or checkerboard. Who knows, but whatever. We'll see. Mm. It's enhanced. That's all I know. It's yeah. good. In other news, if I go back to more Xbox One X stuff, apparently uh, Ninja Gaiden 2, Fable 2, and Splinter Cell Conviction got Xbox One X enhanced a, f- a couple weeks ago. Mm. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so Great. if you're uh, interested in playing Ninja Gaiden, good game. Fable 2 and Fable 3 are also Xbox One X enhanced. I loved Fable 3, dude. I played that not too long ago, and I fucking love that game. I thought it was amazing. Oh, I fucking loved it a lot. I missed that series. I never really got into it. I think I tried to play. I totally missed it. I just went back to it randomly one day. I was like, I have this Fable 3 game backwards compatible. I'm going to play it. And I played it, dude. And I fucking, I liked the whole thing. I thought it was going to be like a cheesy RPG because it always looked cheesy, right? Like very cartoony and and not serious like Skyrim. And it's not serious, but it is kind of serious at the same time. Like, it's really weird. It's a really cool story, though, and really cool, like, just a really cool little RPG. So, so, so I'm gonna yeah, I can't wait to see what uh, Playground Games is doing with that game. Fable 4, bro. Fable yeah. 4. Yeah. Mm, mm. See here, more news. Um, that's all I have for news, I think. Hey, there's, there's one piece of news here that I was reading actually today. Okay. Uh, and that is that there will soon be more PC gamers in China than the total population of the United States. Oh, yeah. So this is a new article by PC Gamer, released just a few hours ago. It says here, despite a year-long licensing freeze on new video game approvals in China, PC gaming in China has become a $16 billion industry. It says here, by the year 2023... There's going to be an estimated 354 million PC gamers playing online games in China alone. Don't we have two? Isn't there 354 million, dude? Aren't we at 258 mil, million right now in population in the U.S.? Some, somewhere in that range, no, right? No, I think population in the U.S. is 325. U.S. I was way oh, off. You. <laughs> <laughs> I just should remember that uh, yeah, number, so but this is probably back back in the eighties or something. 20, 20, 2018 U.S. population is three hundred twenty-seven million, so I wasn't too far off. Two three twenty-seven point two as of twenty eighteen, so just last year. That's it's a lot of population, but they're gonna have three hundred fifty-four million gamers on PC. That's just kids and people gaming on PC. Yeah, I yeah, I wonder just. Man, that's just mind blowing. But I mean, it is the largest country. And guess who's wise. running all those games? And guess who's running all those sixteen billion dollar industry? Guess Tencent. Who? Tencent. That's right, our yeah. friends. Tencent. They're going to own the world. They're going to buy man. Horrible Gamers podcast pretty soon. I hear. Jeez. They're going to buy us out. <laughs> We're going to be presidency. The ten- sponsored by Tencent. <laughs> We're going to be the Tencent podcast. Our next U.S. president is going to be owned by Tencent. Uh, the the military is going to be owned by Tencent. See, that's a good idea. We're going to start a, an official Tencent podcast, and then yeah. they're gonna come after us. We're going to be like, buy it from us. Yeah, just buy it from how us. They're going to be like, well, how about we kill you? One billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be like, how about we send special assassins to just kill all you guys, and then we just take the name from you guys once you're dead. It's like, oh fuck, okay. Well, how about you guys just go ahead? All right, <laughs> take we it, guys. Die. We don't care. Just go ahead. We don't want no. Crazy assassin ninjas coming at us. <laughs> Crazy assassin ninjas coming. Right. <laughs> Going to work. A um, katana comes across. Oof. Oh. It says here, if you're surprised by the size of China's PC gaming market, you shouldn't be, Gunny. You shouldn't be surprised. It has been exploding in growth since 2001, when the total market was only worth a hundred million dollars in China. So back in 2001, the entire PC gaming market, the entire PC market, was a hundred million. Yeah. Fucking 18 years later, 16 billion. They're, isn't that weird that they're a little slow? But I guess they're, they're very traditional, you know, 
still com is it still communist? I don't know if I could even say that, but there's well, still technically not, but I mean technically, yeah. You know, like they, How do I say it? They're very restrictive on their content. They you totally know, are the very restrictive. Comes into their country. Country. It is a very um closed you know least country. Yeah. Like very like they got fucking facial scanners and shit or log you into your games and shit, and, you know, like they're like on some next level black mirror shit over there. <laughs> they're like yeah, they're, they're, they're like what the NSA wants to make the US like. That's what they're like. They're already there. The NSA in the US is, is like doing it, but like they're telling us they're not, but they really are. You know? It's like they haven't really told us. In China they don't care. They're like, Yeah, we're watching you. Yeah, we're tracking your face. Yeah, if you want to play this game, we're gonna have to log in with your face. So yeah, log in with your face. About you. Yeah. You put your fingerprint on this fucking keypad to play this game now. Do it. Just fucking do it. And see in the NSA in the US does the same shit, but they don't tell us. Oh, that's true, right? Here we just, just kind of like, we, we, we yeah, respect like, your privacy. Yeah, we, you totally have privacy. We'd never listen to you, ever, on your phone. Ever listen to you on your microphone. Alexa totally protects your privacy, even though we have a thousand employees at Amazon listening to Alexa's conversations. Your privacy is completely protected. Yeah, it's bullshit. At least China's straight up about it. That's what I like. At least they're telling you they're doing it. Unlike the U.S., we're all full of That's shit, true. and no one tells us we're doing it. You know, oh, I'm sure you got privacy, you got rights, motherfucker, bullshit. Yeah, it says here, uh, foreign game accounted for foreign games accounted for sixty percent of China's PC gaming revenue in 2018. China has 138 thousand internet cafes. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. So I mean, those could be, and those are all small, but still, like when you add all those up, that's a a lot of freaking gamers. I and I can just imagine when let's say that they kind of loosen up their you know what content comes into their country and say hey, now you can you know these we know Xbox is there. I know re- PlayStation recently is allowed to now sell in China. Well, Nintendo is calling that's the next one. That's the next one. Was it Nintendo cent. next? So Yeah. Sony I, I, I don't know yet. the infrastructure of China, but I just thought, wow, like everybody having, not everybody, but just gamers having that ability to But listen, Gunny, or, at this point, no one's buying consoles. You right, know why? It's just not you know why? Thing, because think in, about it. Think about right now. Just listen. Think about right now. If you've never gamed, honey, you've never gamed your whole life. You've never touched a video game. And I go and show you fucking Steam. And I'm like, look, honey, you got this game. We could do this. You got this. You want to you wanna build a factory? We got this game to build factories. You want to be a pilot? We got this game. You fly planes. You want to command an army? You got this game that commands armies. You want to fucking shoot people? We got this game. You shoot people. You got different games, right? And then you're just in this fucking world of unlimited games on a PC. You're never going to want to buy a console. You're going to be like, what the fuck is the point of buying a console? That You mean I buy a box that I put on my TV, that I turn on, can I play this game that I play on my PC on there? No. But I already paid for it. Nope, you gotta buy a different game on there. Why? Like, no one's gonna do it. No one's buying those consoles. Right. I mean, because the culture right now is the PC cafes, right? I guess my point was just saying, like, if they loosened up and I don't know the infrastructure over there where, hey, you know, I've got this now high-speed internet running to my house and... But like you said, they're probably going to go PC depending on prices. They're always going to go PC, I think, because PC is always going to be cheaper for them than buying yeah. fucking licensed consoles. I mean, or it could go the other way. They could just build much larger cafe, internet cafes, you know, and just watch this thing really explode. Well, that's kind so. of the reason there's so many internet cafes in China is because of the following. Most of their gamers play free-to-play games. They mm-hmm. don't need to buy a PC to play the game. They could just go live... Because all they play is, like, fucking Apex and PUBG. Like, it, it, if all I played was fucking PUBG... Literally, the only game in the world I played was PUBG. I wouldn't have a PS4. I wouldn't have an Xbox. I wouldn't have a Switch. I wouldn't have any of that. I would just have literally one PC with the minimum specs to run fucking PUBG. And I would fucking run PUBG. And that's literally what these internet cafes are. They're gaming PCs, but they're probably minimum spec to run... Like Fortnite and PUBG and Apex. 
That's literally it. And Rings of Elysium yeah. and all that Chinese shit that they're playing over there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Amazing. Anyways, it says here that out of the last year they froze um, their game approvals. They still raked in around $15 billion from money. And that is with a total of 312 million PC gamers currently. So currently they have 312 million PC gamers in China. That's nearly the population of the United States altogether, guys. Literally, like, that's... Like, take LA out of... Take New York City out, and the rest of the country is playing PC games, pretty much in China. Wow, That's, yep. that's how big it is over there. Anyways, they say only um, 79 million of those people were actually spending money on the games. So out of the 312 million... Only 79.7 million out of those were spending money on games. Amazing that they make up for all that and, money. And out of 79 million people, they made $15 billion. Now imagine yeah. if they can get the rest of those people to spend money on games. That yeah, would be or a, at least a few dollars, right? Uh, That's that, all it's going to take. It's going to become a $50 billion, $100 billion fucking market alone just china alone so think about how many games are going to start catering to that market when they're like well fuck every other country these we make fucking we can make a hundred million dollars off of the chinese fucking people and fuck what america thinks about this game <laughs> you know what i mean fuck right, what yeah, canada I mean, and mexico and north america well, fuck fuck north america altogether fuck south there's america there's a few eagles up there right so. <laughs> yeah, fuck South America too, because fuck them both. Let's just make a game for China, you know? Oh, true, right? Yeah, definitely yeah. a free to play. And, and there's probably like like an Apex Legends type game where you know they say that's a new one, but they're just gonna make so many clones of that game and throw that in the China mm-hmm. market. And just let, make let me a bill, tell you this: couple billion alone in China, the PC gamers, seventy nine million of them, brought in. Fifteen point twenty one billion dollars, right? Say, say you count all of them. Fuck it, three hundred and twelve million of them. They all brought in that much money. Fifteen point twenty one billion dollars. That's like a, a third of China's population altogether. Like they have like a billion people over there. The U.S. in total, the entire video game industry. That's from like Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox. Fucking the Ouya, the fucking the mobile market, the fucking tablets, the the PC, the everything about video games in the United States. The entire video game market in the country of the United States brought in thirty billion dollars. China's PC market alone, their gaming PC market alone, not their console market, not their Xbox market, not their Nintendo market. None of that was counted in this figure. Their PC market alone accounted for more than half of the entire United States video game market. That is fucking crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're going to have people that don't give a fuck about (laughs) any other country but China. If I was a video game maker, I would make a game for China. I'm telling you that right now. If I was Epic, I would make a Fortnite China edition. I don't care how, what it took. But I want to make a Fortnite China edition now. Uh, what do we have to build? I don't care. Fuck it. Who cares? Yep. Man, I thought it was uh, World of Warcraft they were playing over there. But I guess there are different. I would just try to find like some of the top games that they play. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if any of these are actually relevant at this time. But it's still it's amazing just yeah. how many. It says here that... Um, Actually, a lot of Steam's revenue is coming from China. That's right. Hmm. Yep. And it says here, even though, even though, like, Steam, you know, Steam has managed to stay available to Chinese gamers for a while. Um, there's services like Twitch. They have been blocked by the Chinese government. Uh, but through Steam, Chinese players can still play games that would probably never be approved for sale, like Grand Theft Auto V. So, since you're over 24% of Steam users, 24%, that's nearly a fucking quarter of everyone that plays on Steam, has set their language to simplify Chinese. And China is the biggest source of download traffic from Steam. So, 
League of Legends. That was that's the number one game, of mm. course. Think about PUBG, Gunny. Remember PUBG, the little game PUBG? I remember when that came to Xbox. It earlier, very, in, not very well known. Earlier this year, player unknown himself said that Asia contributes for more than fifty three percent of its nine hundred and twenty million dollars in revenue. Damn. More than 53% is from Asia alone. So, the Asia market is huge, man. Fucking big as fucking. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. Uh, hey, come over here. They're going to take our games. They're going to take our games, Kenny. We need to build a wall. Build a wall. They're taking all our games. We need to make games in America. Stay I'm in America. In California. Well, make a game in America, about America, stay in America, sold in America. Fuck yeah. America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared they're gonna come down here and take our games. They're gonna take our games down over there, and they're gonna they're gonna be making their games Chinese and and putting the Chinese words in our games. And you know what's next, Gunny? What's next? Them communists, communist games gonna come over here. They're gonna be putting them communist games on us. No, we know we're gonna be driving not, cars made in China. Not my oh, country. Not my country. Ain't no way that's gonna happen here, America. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> esports is now the strongest driver of the growth in China's PC games market. Esports revenue was $6.3 billion in 2018, accounting for 41% of PC online games revenue. It is projected to reach now $9.5 billion uh, by 2023. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So that's it. That's it. That's all I have for the news there. Another news, last piece of news that I have, actually. I didn't realize I had this still on here. Mortal Kombat has not been inducted into the Video Game World Video Game Hall of Fame. So there you go, people. The World Video Game Hall of Fame. Mortal Kombat has been inducted. That's right. It joined Super Mario Kart, Microsoft Solitaire, Colossal Cave Adventure as part of the 2019 class. The four inductees span multiple decades, countries of origin, and gaming platforms, but have all significantly influenced the video game industry, popular culture, and society in general. Um, so yeah, published by Midway Games in 1992, Mortal Kombat is one of the most recognizable fighting games around. Its hyper-violent content led to, the ma to major controversy, several court cases, and the creation of the entertainment software rating sport. So thanks to MK... We got the ESRB people, thanks to them. Yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, the 12 finalists that were announced for the 2019 World Video Game Hall of Fame class were the f as follows. Here we go. This is the list that was initially proposed, but only four made it. So this was the list that made it. Originally was Candy Crush, Centipede, Colossal Cave Adventure, Dance Dance Revolution, Half-Life, Microsoft Windows Solitaire, Mortal Kombat, Myst, NBA 2K, Sid Meier's Civilization, Super Mario Kart, and Super Smash Bros. Melee. So that's your uh, previous inductees include Donkey Kong, Doom, Final Fantasy VII, The Legend of Zelda, and The Oregon Trail. So there you go. So now these four games join the Hall of Fame for the Yay. video games. Yeah, so Mortal Kombat, Colossal Cave... Adventure, Microsoft Solitaire, and Super Mario Kart are now on the list with Donkey Kong, Doom, Final Fantasy VII, The Legend of Zelda, and The Oregon Trail. Awesome. Cool for them. Hall of Fame. They deserve it. I feel like Mortal Kombat really deserves it because that's like the fighting game, right? Besides Street Fighter. Besides Street Fighter, I always felt like Street Fighter dominated them. No, I, I feel like it did too, but... I, but but Mortal Kombat, they just keep they going just, and, they're, and they they're, deliver great con, yeah. you know, quality. They're like, fuck, we're just here, motherfuckers. You want to see people get their head chopped off by a scorpion? We're here for you. And those were always cool, like, back in the day with consoles. And it's something that I never had to do where you had to put a code in. And you had to do something special to show blood. Show because blood. that was the best part. You didn't want your parents finding out about it. Well, the Nintendo right? that had the green blood? Or was it Sega? The green blood. Oh, I, yeah. I forgot what console that was. I remember. One of them had green blood because they couldn't have red blood. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's a wide lens. Yeah. Hey, but then also Microsoft Solitaire. Uh, that's, that's that's a, a big game. I mean, I see people And that was, that what, shit. 20 years before Xbox? Or All something? the time, dude. 
I'm yeah. playing that shit all the time. Every time I walk into like an office, like a doctor's office or something, the fucking receptionist is playing solitaire. Yeah, Windows ninety five. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's when that came out, even as a shit, kid, like so long ago. Even as a fucking kid, I would walk into the doctor's office or the dentist or wherever the fuck, and then there was a fucking receptionist. Oh, hello. Oh, you're here to meet Doctor Brown. Yeah, we're here to meet Doctor Brown. Well, Doctor Brown, I feel this out. And then, like, you see her clicking and typing shit really fast. You can then, see, like, and you can see you, Solitaire through her, her, her glasses. Yeah, and then you see, you <laughs> hear this, you hear, like, th- and, then, and then you look at her and you're like, motherfucker, you're playing a game. Fucking lady. Are you playing Minesweeper right now? What are you doing? No one played Minesweeper. <laughs> Minesweeper was a thing, but, like, Solitaire was more of a thing. We'll just have that shit in the background just playing. And there's one lady that had, like, thousands of games played, dude. Like, thousands of them, thousands of them. I'm like... That is fucking crazy. I kind of got into that Pajong for for a little bit. Yeah. Back in early 2000. Hmm. That was that was a cool game. I think that was like a tile like tile uh, Chinese symbol game or something. It was on a Windows. So hmm. I was gaming before the Xbox was an Xbox. <gasps> gaming before the Xbox was an Xbox. Um Hey, but your gaming is in there, man. Sid Meier's Civ. Yeah, I made the list, but it didn't get inducted. Damn. Sucks. Civ, I feel like it's a really... It's a good game. I, mean, I feel like it deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, maybe. There's yeah. so many games that have come out under that name, you know what I mean? Under that license of civilization. Anything not on this list did you come, just comes to mind really quick that you think should be in there? Um... No, not really. I mean, out of this list. Yeah, I'm just thinking like I'm looking at the, down at the list and I'm like, Candy Crush isn't that kind of recent? Where the other ones are seem a little more classic. But Candy Crush kind of made that whole like match three thing really popular. Oh, they did. Okay, I didn't know that. So I never got into it. That's the whole thing, right? Like, they made the played the match, match threes. The match that threes. That's what they made really popular. And it's kind of like the the father of uh, of match threes. They kind of, you know, they're the ones that did it first. Kind of. I mean, there's probably other games that did it first. For example, Connect Four did it first. If you want to get technical, but yeah. Mm. As far as these as this list here, like a game that comes to mind, maybe Grand Theft Auto should be on this list because they're really influential for the Hall of Fame or anything like that. There's Guns of Dotto, there's any sports game, really. Football or anything, Madden or fucking NFL or anything like that. Hmm. Hmm. Anyways. Anyways. It's now time for community questions. You can leave us questions in our Discord or or upon our Facebook group. We post a post in there usually every Friday. I usually try to do that every Friday. And um, I'll ask you for the questions for the show this week. And um, yeah, it's good to them. Oh, fuck. Excuse me. Uh, community questions. Let's go. Community questions, Gunny. Go, go. No, 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 Gunny. What the fuck? What the fuck, Gunny? What are you doing? What are you doing? No, what are you what are you doing? Don't be making faces at me. <laughs> hey, sorry about that. I had an interruption there. I can tell. I can see that. I was just fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> There's yelling going on in this household. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. Uh, first question comes from Brian Tilt Jr. It says, Jesus, have you... I know you answered this already, but have you haven't played my Not My Car Battle Royale yet. I keep seeing that on Steam because I've got it in my queue and I played the... No. The... Uh, beta for that game mm-hmm. so yeah but you haven't got that yet i don't know what is it 20 bucks or so on steam yeah no it's free free to play oh is it a free to play okay yeah, i didn't know free yeah. to play games free to play cool yeah all right so get on that this week me and you we're gonna play it we're gonna stream it yeah um next one from brian did you hate the Sonic movie trailer? What did you think? I, I didn't hate it, but I thought it was kind of fucking stupid that Jim Carrey is not fat. I really thought that was fucking stupid. I thought that was the stupidest fucking thing ever. I was like, that's stupid. I thought Sonic looked fucking stupid as shit, too. 
He looked too much like a human. With spiky blue hair. Blue hair yeah. And now, I didn't see the trailer. I, I may have seen bits and pieces of it, but a lot of it I saw. I didn't like the lot. song, Coolio, Gangster's Paradise. Fuck that song. Does not fit with that trailer. Why is it even in there? It's supposed to be a kid's movie or an adult movie? I don't know. It, it, I, it, so it can't make up its mind, I think. Yeah, it can't make up its gather. mind. Is, is it an adult movie for like the nostalgic people that played Sega, Sonic? Or is it a kid movie for little kids that want to see a furry fucking hedgehog running around? I got, gotta go fast! What the fuck? When the fuck did Sonic say I gotta go fast? He just went fast. He just <laughs> he went fast. He never said, gotta go fast. What the fuck? Is it the cartoon that said that? The Sonic cartoon? I don't remember. I think even, made, isn't there even a current one right now? It's it's Sonic something around. Sonic it. Adventure, not, some bullshit. Yeah, but like, yeah. Gotta, gotta go fast. Who the fuck? The fuck? Shut up, Sonic. You fucking piece of shit. I hope you get ran over. You fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Piss me and, off. <laughs> and I did go into this kind of why you know with some context and, and many opinions, and I saw like his basically his grill his. His teeth, you know, and I was like, ah, you know, I was like, whoa, what's up with that, you know? Uh, what so, do you no, mean I his teeth? How is Sonic's? What does Sonic's teeth look like? No, I mean like just big pearly white square. Oh, teeth. like you never, you never seen his teeth before? That's true. Huh? I don't think so. Sonic's never had teeth. What the fuck does he? What is he doing having teeth on here? But somebody had even said like he needs to be more cartoony, and I thought, well, I mean, it's CGI. I, I don't know, maybe. Sonic would look better without teeth. Why does he have fucking human teeth? That is right, creepy. He never, yeah, I thought they were human teeth, so... He, they like, are nice. human teeth. Look at his teeth. He's, like, smiling. He looks like human teeth, but, like, there's gaps in them, and, like, it's creepy looking. Yeah, I cre- right? I cringed a little Mother bit when fucker, I saw it. Motherfucker, dude, and he looks like a human. Like I said, he looks too much like a human. He, he needs to look more like a fucking... They're totally too dent. I don't know. Like it just kind of got. It's added too in there. much like a human. Like I'm looking at a picture of right now. The proposed changes they're gonna do to him because they already came out and said they're gonna fix him, right for the movie. So like on the left, it shows him like in that scene where all the missiles are coming at him and he's looking at the clock on his or his wrist or whatever, and it yeah. shows him on the left like the original version of him where he's looking really tall, really skinny legs, really skinny arms, kind of thin body, kind of long body. Looks like a human. Fucking human. And on right. the right, now he has like even skinnier legs. And like he looks shorter. Like Sonic is short, right? He looks shorter. He has like a more rounder body, like not as long body, he like a shorter, fatter body. And his arms are kind of like bigger, like chunkier. But like his arms are, are smaller than his hands. Like his hands are a little bit bigger. Like they got kind of like increased in size. Looks way better. Like his forehead's a little yeah. bit bigger. His like his eyes are a little bit bigger. Like they look like bigger eyes. Like, you're now dis- you're describing looks- video game Sonic to me. He is That's video game want. Sonic on the right, and he's not video game Sonic on the left. On the left, he looks too much like human. Like his eyes are not big enough. His his body's too fucking long. His legs are too fucking weird. You guys fucked up. Who designed this? Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? Somebody who's never played Sonic. Huh? I'm almost. I'm, I'm almost. I know that, that some people are have different opinions on this, and and one of the main ones that I saw from Matt Bradford was, uh, which which Matt, you got to listen to this one because I almost disagree with you talking about this on VGO. Where fuck, fuck you know, Matt. what getting, did Matt say? Fucking Matt is over there saying hell. You know, he's angry about people being angry about this whole thing and the way he oh, looks and how you. it needs to be changed. Fuck but you, Matt, Matt. You know what? Fuck you, Matt. I'm fucking mad. But, man, I'm part of the collective over here, okay? I'm going to go Borg and just say that, look, it, you know, if we don't agree with something, we're going to say something. And we have, and the internet has spoken, and we demand a change. Yeah, big change. Big motherfucking change. But, no, I say the slight ones. I, I mean, I think, you know, yeah, it's, it's, I think they did this on purpose. They put this out there to get people's reactions and... Yeah, definitely got a reaction from me from like that's yeah, not Sonic. Fucking ugly <laughs> ass fucking Sonic looking thing. Looks like um, a fucking blue walking rat. And Jim looks goofy as fuck as the Jim looks fucking stupid as fuck. He's he too does. skinny. He's I too skinny. Had to laugh. I was like, yeah. What's he doing as Doctor Robotnik? He's too skinny. I mean, he might be. He's funny. Like I get it why they picked him. He's a funny character. He can pull it off. I think. 
It's just he looks too skinny. They should have put him in a fat suit. Oh, yeah, good point. Think about, like, when he when he did the Grinch, the reason he pulled off the Grinch so well is because he didn't look like Jim Carrey. He looked like the fucking Grinch. He did, yeah. And this, he looks like Jim Carrey with the weird-looking mustache. That's what he looks like to me. He doesn't look like Dr. Robotnik. I don't know. He does in the end, though, like, with the new, the new trailer they showed or whatever where... He's like bald at the end and he has like the weird looking mustache and he's all bald and he has the weird looking goggles and the red jacket. He looks a little bit more like him. I still wish he was fat. Put him in a fat suit. That's all I'm saying. Anyways. Yeah, I think either way it's, I mean, but so, so, yeah, take those, take those teeth off the Sonic, shorten him up a little bit for sure. Anyways, Um, Kenny, next question. Next one. Brian has another one. Uh, since we know Jonathan Hall had a little, little little car accident, he wants to know what kind of car should Jonathan Hall buy to drive you around on Boys Night Out? What's Jonathan taking us out on? In? Oh, um. When we go out. I want him to What's buy. Gonna... I want him to buy a Toyota Camry. That's it. <laughs> Just I don't know. I was thinking a smart car, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Kenny, but I don't want to die. I've seen Jonathan's driving, and he's high all the time. I don't want to die. I think Toyota Camry seems to be a pretty safe sedan. I mean, if you want to go in style, like, how about we get a Tesla going there, motherfucker? Let's, let's well, get a safety, Tesla, I mean, we're talking GMC Yukon here. Oh, okay, we're going to get SUV. We're going to get some real nice treatment when he takes us out. All right. Well, because if he flips over four or five times, we mother, have a better chance of survival. Motherfucking Yukon Denali and shit over here. How about That's that? It. Mm, yeah. How about an Escalade, huh? Huh, Pen? Escalade, front grill, rear yeah, grill. Fucking rims on that motherfucker. Lift it. Spinners, dude. Put yeah. shack feet on that motherfucker. 28-inch rims. Yeah. yeah. Lift that shit off the ground. Lift if it up. If we know Jonathan, he's just going to want to get one of those, like, those Ford stupid. Tempest. No, he's going to want to get a stupid. Lower down to the no, ground. No, no, listen, listen. Jonathan is being a fucking hipster, hippie motherfucker that he is. He's going to get a stupid-ass Prius. I'm going to put a Prius to save the earth, guys. You got to be eco-friendly. You got to save the earth. No, fucking... Fuck you, Jonathan. Get a motherfucking gas guzzling motherfucking Corvette, bitch. We want you Fuck to yeah. Ford, Ford Burn F-350. all the fossil fuels. Burn them all. Burn extra fossil fuels everywhere you go. Roll coal, motherfucker. Yeah, America. Get an F three fifty with the big we tires. Want the big pipe in the back of the in the back of the truck, <laughs> right? That big giant pipe that just has that like yeah. rumble to it. You know, you got a fucking big smokestack. You got a grill back there. You got a fucking full size grill that you can pull out of tailgate parties and motherfucking huge tires on it that you're never going to go off-roading in, but you got huge motherfucking tires on it because fuck yeah, America. That Just fucking cranking thing. out some country music that's with right. a big old flag mm-hmm. hanging off the back. Yeah, that's right. Big old flag in the back hanging off that thing. Mm, fuck yeah. With the big old fucking rock star like energy drink sticker on the window because everyone, <laughs> everyone... Shotgun rack. <laughs> everyone that drives one of those trucks has to has a huge energy drink sticker on the back of the windows. Either Rockstar or Monster Energy. Or Red Bull choice. or something. Huh? No, usually not Red Bull. Red Bull is more like the... That's not really like the thing. Like, like people really like to have like Monster Energy drinks or like Rockstar Energy drinks on their windows. Well, on well, anyway, you're not being culturally sensitive. Shouldn't they have like Budweiser or something like that? No, no, no. Now you're being you're being racist, Gunny. What makes you think that, that those people would be drinking Budweiser or High Life? But isn't that what those people drink? <gasps> No, what do they drink? Keystone, Gunny. How about Ooh, that, really? huh? How about well, that? Well, they're in the South. It, but I'm thinking the California people. Oh, the, those people. Roll coal, motherfucker, yeah. No, they got energy drinks and shit, bro. They're not putting alcoholic beverages on their windows. That's stupid. True, that'll get them pulled over. Good they got, point. like, the dirt bike hanging out the back. The dirt bike and the quads and shit. They got, like, yeah. five quads back there and fucking all stacked on top of each other. We're going to go quad in today, bro. They got the big light rack on the top of the truck. There's like two boots turned upside down, shoved in the back of the, <laughs> between the bed of the truck. I know what you're saying, Jesus. Mm-hmm, America, motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> I expect to, I expect you to pull up in that next time I see you, Jonathan. That's all I'm saying. I expect you to pull up in that. That's what we want. I want a fucking big truck, 
F-350, you know, because America made, motherfucker, yeah. Big F-350. Big old spotlights on it, on the top. Yep, I want that big ass, like that big ass light bar on top of it, like that fucking bright ass light that lights up like fucking... Like daytime going down the freeway. Yeah, it goes into (laughs) outer space to like alert the aliens that were here. Gotta get one of them on that motherfucker and... Yeah, fuck yeah. You can install one of those, like, train horns on your truck. <laughs> move out my way! Yeah, motherfucker, move! Yeah, fucking Prius, get that Prius out of my way! I'll crush you. <laughs> <laughs> or or I expect you to go full hippie and get a smart car. There you, you go, like a Chevy choose. Volt. I'm not going to fit in a smart car, but, I mean, I guess. You can buy a trailer for the smart car. We can haul us around the back. <laughs> But, but, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> why doesn't smart cars sell like an, ex- like an extension for their cars? That's a good idea. Though, right? I can put a little, little yeah. hitch on the back. Yeah, like a little ball a, on the back of that and put a trailer. We got the new 2019 smart car S. We got S for sports. And then yeah, we've added a new highly requested feature more seating without the compromise of a bigger car. I saw a guy that introducing the, week, the trailer edition of Smart Car, and you add four new seats to the back of this trailer, and we could attach this motherfucker to your car, and you all last them up with the <laughs> fucking Smart Car hauling the little trailer with four people in it. Fuck yeah! Damn, yeah. I saw a dude driving this. Well, okay, so I was parked, and he Wait, was in the parking lot or what have you car? store, and it looked like he was part of the car. And I'm not saying like he was like fat or overweight i mean i couldn't tell it just looked like he was like he like he was the car you know what do you mean he was the car like he was and, that fat and he was that big he was and covering like, the whole like, window or well because the car is so small you know is he that big what are you what are you trying i don't, I don't know what you're saying gunny what are you saying i'm saying that it looked like he was the car you know <laughs> like, <laughs> like like he like he's these things are like, like two-seater little you're saying like a, like in a cartoon when the people like the big guy squeezes into the car and the car gets all big yeah exactly like That's that look like yeah the big guy squeezes into the little smart car. I don't cars. see them that often anymore, so nobody ever buys them. <laughs> smart car people buy them, I guess. Buy them. Jesus is giving smart car a free new accessory for their vehicles, free of charge. I don't even want you guys to, like, give me anything for it. You guys take all the credit. Hey, me. but he can laugh at everybody, probably even Prius owners, and say, Psh, I'm paying, like, $10 a week of yeah, my gas yeah, bill. Yeah, bro. What's up? Unless you're driving a Geo Metro, you ain't paying that much. Yeah. What's up? Geo all Metro. the way to the bank. Geo Metro rules. Geo Metro. Get a Geo Metro, Jonathan. Fuck all new cars. They still make those? Jeez. I, I don't know. Maybe. Get a Yugo. Oh, no, no, no. Get a fucking... Get a Geo, dude. A Geo Metro purple. I tested one of those Geos back in the day. It was rims. a stick shift. Get a, a, purple, a purple Geo Metro with green rims. Green rims. Fuck yeah. <laughs> It's got it's got two fucking, big woofers in the back. Fucking Barney style. Bro. Now nobody can sit back there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, fuck yeah. We're all dreaming about Jonathan's car. He he was car shopping today, Gunny. He was car shopping while watching the stream earlier. So I don't know. I might fucking I might fucking see what he got soon. I don't know. We'll see, see, Jonathan. We'll see. Anyway, next question from John Jerome. What do you guys dislike about Destiny? And what makes the Division 2 so much better that it gets airtime every week? It's I took a break this week, John. It's actually a good game. I think... <laughs> I'm just giving you shit, man. Like, Destiny is a good yeah. game. It's just not a game that I got into. It the, the Something about Destiny that I just didn't like was the spaciness of it. The, sh- the, 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 the space bullshit. I think... I like the setting of Destiny 2 a lot more. Like the realistic New York City, real life almost type of shit going on. You know what I mean? Like the setting of it is it's more interesting to me than it is space and this fucking we, we live in space on this fucking rock thing going to Venus and, and fuck that. Fuck you in space. Fuck space. Fuck Destiny. Division 2 better than Destiny. I said it, motherfuckers. What's up? Yeah, I guess on the same avenue of what you're talking about, where, like, about Destiny, what I don't like about it, I think, hmm, 
I don't know. I like Destiny. I've matter of fact, I've been wanting to play it all week. I want to get it on PC. Fuck Destiny. Fuck Destiny. It sucks. Garbage game. I did get about twenty hours of Destiny two on the Xbox One. Um, I have it installed. I do want to buy it for PC. I want to experience it mouse and keyboard. No, you don't. You don't. I do. I want to get it. I'm trying to find it on the cheap, actually. Go to GameStop. You can buy it for two dollars, like Brink did. Because it's no, so for fucking PC? For, such I garbage. A yeah, he bought the fucking PC thing. It was like a box that says Destiny 2 PC, and it was like three dollars. Man, I'm gonna check new. my local GameStop. Go to GameStop, fucking then. GameStop, buy a fucking cheap ass Division 2 copy for two dollars because no one wants to play that garbage anymore. It's so I think it, 2000 and late, bro. Yeah, I mean it. I don't know. It, maybe it doesn't have. Well, I remember even with PvP where a lot of that was there wasn't a lot of content to it, but it's fun. I found the PvP very fun. Um, I think I got bored with it too quick. And maybe that's what it is about Destiny 2 where I think maybe the difference between that and Division 2 is where Division 2 I can run down the same street, shoot the same guys over and over again and I think there's enough there to where I can grind in this area, and then I can go to the next area of Division Two on this side of the Potomac River, um, and grind some more where I've already been 15 times. Where I feel like that's it's still fun to me, you know. Listen, that's how Gunny, I was able to get 70 hours or 60 hours out of this game. Listen, Gunny, you come back into my country when your KD is over one. Oh, okay. You know what? I'm gonna allow that because. <laughs> This podcast network allows that. <laughs> <laughs> Did I explain that correctly? I don't know. Listen, I think... Gunny. Listen, Gunny. You come back to my country, okay? When your KD is over one. You Get suck. Get out of my country. Get out of my country. You suck a little bit. Fuck Destiny. <laughs> Destiny is good. The shooting is good. I think the game's beautiful. It's the game is beautiful. It's a good It's a good shooting game. Everything feels good. I just, like I said, uh, the, the spaciness. I don't like it. I want realistic, more more grounded shit. Fuck space. The only space shit I want to do is explore space. I don't want to fucking shoot shit in space. I'm exploring space. That's what I want to do, bro. Yeah. There were some of the maps where, what was it, like the oil rigs or oil platforming type style of map that you're in where it felt very restricted. I don't even know what you're talking about. This was like in early in division or in uh destiny 2 you know i think you even play through part of it on the campaign but it was part of that may have yeah the pve section of the game but either way it was just something that i didn't like but fuck destiny 2 i know the guns feel good i know it's not the schluter it's really you just fuck find that, that game one. fuck light levels fuck division yeah i think that's what it was like once i reached what was it level 20 or 30, 20, right? And then you got to get your level up and go talk to these other guys. But, um, I don't know. We'll see. Such a potato game. <laughs> Stop your potato talk. <laughs> potato. The fuck kind of trash talk Who is that? Who put potato in there? Who the fuck that potato was a good trash talk? You I'm going to write you, you, you right your potato, what do potato you have shooting. Potatoes? Look at the potatoes you got there, bro. It's now cucumber talk. Um, all right, next question, Jonathan Arcelo. What's up, dude? He wants to know who would win in a one v one battle: the Night King of Game of Thrones or Thanos, with only the Space Stone and Power Stone. Um. Okay, let's look it up here. Space Stone and Power Stone. What do they do? The space stone in the Marvel Cinematic Universe does the following, Gunny. It does the following. It, um, uh, the space stone is one of the six Infinity Stones, Gunny. One of the six. Doesn't he just have to... F- it is the like- remnant of a singularity that predates the universe, which represents the element of space housed within the Tesseract. Over the course of history, it was wielded by many individuals, including Johann Schmidt of Hydra, Marvel of Kree Empire, the Scrolls, and Loki of Asgard. During the Infinity War, 
the Tesseract was shattered by the mad titan Thanos, who put the Space Stone inside his Infinity Gauntlet. What does it do, though? The I think he can just snap his fingers and... But that's, that's, isn't disappear. that with all the stones? When he snaps his fingers, isn't that like... Oh, yeah, activating true. All the six stones or whatever? Right, 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 right. Stones. You're correct. I... Yes. I, I played that shit the other day on Fortnite. Oh, did you play... Uh, the Infinity... so what is it just like where you, you battle him? Um. So, yeah, there's a team... So there's half and half, 50 versus 50. Um, there's 50 bad guys and there's 50 heroes, I guess. And the heroes are pretty much like you, you spawn in the, in the map as a hero. You have a map and it says, like, there's treasure this way. Go here. And you head there. And when you head there, you open up a chest that's dedicated, designed for you. It's your chest. You have the map to that chest. You get there and that chest will give you, like, some kind of hero's ability, whether it's uh, Captain America's shield, Thor's hammer, Iron Man's little hand blaster things, or uh, Hulk's whatever the fuck green shit, I guess. Uh, hands. I don't fucking know what he got. I don't know. It was, no, no, it was Hawkeye. Hawkeye, Captain America, Iron Man. Okay, you get the shield. Thor. I remember. I remember this here. So there's four now, people in your squad, right? Okay, now you got that. You go and you have to find Thanos and kill him. But... Thanos, the the way you become Thanos is everybody spawns in as one of the bad guys that Thanos has in his army or whatever. I forget what the fuck they're called. Everyone spawns in as that, and then like like it'll say like Infinity Stone, the Power Stone is here, or the Space Stone is here, and it'll be like Yellowstone here, purple, whatever, fuck, blue, whatever. And then it'll show it on the map. So you have to run there as the bad guy, and whoever's the bad guy that gets the first stone, you become Thanos now. And now you have the gauntlet thing. And now you have to collect all the stones. There's six stones. And, like, um, your teammates, as as Thanos, the bad guys, like any little minion, can collect the stone for you and get it for you. So, like, if, like, I cap the stone and Thanos is across the map, he gets the stone no matter what because I capped it. And then the thing is, the heroes keep respawning forever. And so do the bad guys. They both keep respawning forever. Bad guys have like a hundred respawns. It'll have a hundred lives for all the bad guys that can spawn in. You have a hundred times of revives. And so that's, yeah, so like two lives each or whatever. And the the heroes have a limited lives until Thanos collects all six stones. Once you collect all the six stones, uh, then the heroes start dying like forever. Like if you kill somebody, they are dead. They can't ah, respawn. Permadeath, yeah. So, but the, he has to have all of the six stones for that to happen. So as the heroes, you're trying to stop them from getting all the six stones. Because once he gets all his six stones, dude, he just becomes, like, unstoppable. Like, fucking powerhouse. Just, he has all the abilities. Jumping, flying, shooting shit, lasers, fucking all kinds of cool shit. Now, this is the second time that we've seen this like a, in the last year. Infinity fucking war style shit. Yeah, so I guess my question to you is... We've seen this is a Marvel slash Disney property where obviously they've allowed Epic to keep, you know, to use Thanos. Do you think we're going to see more, maybe something from Iron Man or, you know, Captain America? Are they going to add anybody else in there or they, do you think they'll just allow just to, just to be a Thanos thing? It's just a Thanos thing. Yeah. It's part, it's part of the movie, man. It's just. Because I'm sure they want to build up for their own set of games, you know, and keep that property yeah but either way it's pretty cool i did watch some gameplay from it last time it was pretty awesome and i've done the 50 v 50 straight yeah. up so but i can't build so i can't play that game all right uh, so gunny i got the i got the infinite the, the the space stones i got i got the the thing or whatever the thing so anyways the infinity stone gunny it represents and governs over space. The space stone grants the wielder absolute control over space itself. It is primarily used to open portals to other locations and can even allow interdimensional travel. As one of the six infinity stones, the space stone ranks among the most powerful artifacts in the universe. <sighs> so now let me tell you about the power stone. Hmm? Hmm? Let me tell you about this one. This motherfucker right here. Uh... Capabilities. 
As the Infinity Stone that embodies the destructive force of the universe, the Power Stone grants its wielder tremendous energy manipulation capabilities. Like all Infinity Stones, the Power Stone is among the most powerful artifacts in the universe, with only beings of an extraordinary constitution being able to use this, to use it, while less powerful be beings would erupt in a violent explosion. <gasps> The Ooh. Power Stone can also be used via a conduit such as the Cosme Rod or the Infinity Gauntlet, preventing the need to touch the stone while being able to utilize its power. Okay, okay. Attempting to use the stone without any safety measures is extremely painful, even incredibly powerful beings, blah, blah, blah. Whatever, whatever. It says here, wielders of the Power Stone are able to project fiery purple energy beams of waves strong enough to destroy an entire planet. Dude, okay, come on. Jonathan, <laughs> if motherfucking Thanos has a motherfucking stone that can destroy a whole planet, what yeah. the fuck do you think? I mean, you think he's going to not beat the Night King? You think the fucking Night King with the fucking ice dragon and dead people is going to be able to kill this fucking guy? Ain't no fucking way. This motherfucker can destroy the whole planet the Night King is on and just fly away in a spaceship. He's or a whatever. god. He's a fucking point. god, yeah. Like, I can destroy a whole planet. Fight me. Like, e even the superheroes in the movie shouldn't be able to fight this guy. This motherfucker can destroy Earth. Why doesn't he do that? Just fucking destroy Earth. That's what I do. Fuck Infinity. The Marvel heroes are stupid as fuck. They should have all last lost to Thanos. Thanos should just kill everything and be by himself. No, I didn't see that movie, but I did catch up on Game of Thrones this week, so. Game of Thrones was but good. But no spoilers, last week. folks. Game of Thrones was fucking good last week, all right? Very that good. whole war between the that was very the good that Ice was... King and and the fucking like just the beginning dude where the fucking Darth Raki okay kind of spoilers people if you, if you don't watch it kind of skip this for the next few minutes here but in the be beginning Gunny it's beginning now in the beginning when the Darth Raki and the, the the Melisandre shows up and she's like raise your swords and and Jorah's like what bitch raise your swords and they raise her she's like. Um, blah, 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 blah. Then the fucking shit catches on fire. I was like, oh shit. That was cool. These motherfuckers are ready for battle. I was like, they got a chance, right? They got fire swords and shit. They got a chance. And then They're they take things. off. Dude, that, 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 that whole scene right there makes you feel good. Like, you got hope, right? I know you got hope, Cunny. You got hope. I did. I had hope, but they were coming you in hope, right? I thought they were Yeah, you're going to fucking wreck, wreck those. Way. Yeah, right, those fucking ice walkers. They can't stand a chance against a horse and a dude with the fucking sword on fire. No way. But as soon as you see, like, oh, you see them all running over there with their fucking swords on fire, and you see the flames start being, like, snuffed, like, it's like, and you start hearing, like, instead of the Darth Raki, like, war scream, is them screaming in, like, terror. And yeah, like, as they ran back oh, with their... Oh, shit. It's like, holy between fuck. their legs. Fuck, yeah, man. Then only, like, three dudes return. <laughs> It was like, dude, like, at that like point, one horse just ran, kept, he yeah. just kept running back. Like, I'm fucking out of here. Well, the thing is, well, I don't understood that whole time was why are the, 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 the big like catapult things? Why were they in the front? Why didn't they have those like near the walls of the castle? You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Just the placement behind, be, behind the, the unsullied and shit. Like they had them in the front, which was fucking stupid. And they only shot it like once. It's like they, they fired the stupid can the, the fireballs once and it's like hold fire on the cannon fucking balls things hold the fire. That's true, because they did say cease fire once the Darth yeah. Rocky got all the way to the front because the they didn't fuck? want to kill the Darth Rocky with them, so but you're right, they didn't fire again, did <laughs> what they? What the fuck didn't they fire? Oh again? no. You know what it was? Remember they couldn't because of the the, the ice uh wind. Or they try to light up the second Who time? Who cares? Just fucking shoot the thing into the Oh that's true. They guess they could just Shoot them without shoot actually rocks, light on fire. Fucking big ass rocks at them. <laughs> Smash the shit out of the fucking ice walker things or whatever. That was stupid. But like the the I gotta give the unsullied an A plus. Those motherfuckers are tough. They all died, but they're tough as shit, right? Yeah, they are. Because like everyone else is like retreat, <laughs> retreat. You know, I like, gotta hand it to the unsullied. Everyone's they, like they held their ground. Yeah, dude. Everyone's like running back right, and then like Grey Worm is like in the front of the line. He's like. Uh, protect the fucking retreat. And those motherfuckers did not falter. They, like, stayed in their formation. They stayed in their lines. They didn't, like, they didn't fall apart or nothing, right? Like, you saw them yep. even, like, 
they like grouped up together and like formed a huge shield in front of them and like it was like you know like they're doing their fucking like huh! they're, they're taking a step back and doing their fucking war cries and shit taking a step back slowly like the whole line is moving back that shit was cool as fuck i was like those guys are some tough motherfuckers dude out of everyone they're the toughest motherfuckers there yeah yep it was crazy it was a cool sh- episode good show man Oh, that was a cool fucking episode. I won't get into any more spoilers on that episode. That episode was We're going to stop good. there, folks. You can come back now. If you're still listening. I do have another question. From Scott Neely. He asked, if you could remaster or remake of any game, what would it be and why? Splinter Cell. Pandora's Tomorrow. Damn, I don't, I don't think I played that one. I love that I just game. saw... Uh, what was it today I saw? It was backwards compatible Conviction, right? I wonder if that game still holds up. It's kind of been backwards compatible for a while now. It's got Xbox One X enhanced is what it did. Nice. I really want a remaster of the Mass Effect series on consoles. Yeah, a lot of people have been asking for that. That would be nice. That would be so nice. Like, just the first game. Just completely redo the graphics on it. Redo everything to the current gen. Just and maybe, maybe some of the shooting and movement... You redo it. Just yeah, redo just the first redo one. Do the fucking game. Just redo it. Just give me that. That'd be nice. Yeah. Um, man, maybe for me, I, I'm thinking. Uh, I would really like to see one of my favorite games is Dragon's Dogma. Mm. I know it's it's fairly recent, like it came out late on the Xbox 360, you know, but um, and it's it's back. Well, no, I think they've even redone it for for the Xbox One. It's not even a backwards compatible thing, but PC. Um, I, the, I would say like even some of the cut scenes are a little like you can tell that Capcom went a little light with the uh, budget, but still I'd like I'd love to see those redone. Yeah. And yeah, but I'd say keep it single player um, because it did have that where you can get NPCs from Xbox or from you know other people, you know whether it be Xbox Live or PlayStation, you can actually take other people's. Um, what are they called? Like they're, you know, your followers basically, right? You get one follower um, to take from someone. So you can just borrow them, which is pretty neat. And then the cool part was when you send them back, you can send them back with a gift. Uh, and I don't think I've ever said this on a show where I've sent back like something expensive. Um, like, oh, okay, here's, here's gold or something. You know, you can have your, you know, your follower back. And, so then I've had people borrow mine, and then they basically what happens is they bring it back and they give me a rock. <laughs> like, gee, thanks a lot. You know, like like they were that bad or something that that's my gift is a rock. You can send nothing, but no. Here's a bucket of water. Nice. Happens. But yeah, I'd love to see that game redone, man. Okay. Awesome. Next question, then. Next question. All right. Next one from Scott. He asked... Uh, did you hear they were supposed to fix the way Sonic looks in the new movie? Yeah, we definitely talked yeah, about we that. Definitely talked about that. <clears throat> and Gib eight seven 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 wants to know if a tree falls in a video game and no one is there to hear it. Does it make a sound? No, it's digital. Stupid question, Ryan. Stupid. Yeah. Question. No, no, no audio, Ryan. Yeah. Yep. And if you, Brian asked if you could rename your kid. What would it be? Nothing. Actually, <laughs> nothing. I was the one that picked my kid's name, so I like her name. Yeah, mine is, uh, my son is Kyle. Um, I don't know, I'd call him Skippy. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I've been reading yeah. this book, yeah. this sci-fi book, and he calls yeah. this, like, sci-fi dude Skippy all the time. Yeah, my daughter's name is Yahida, and I picked that name. Fun fact, I picked that name because my, my elementary school crush name was that. Yahida. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. I liked the fucking name. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe that's why I had a crush on her. I don't fucking know. I like the name. Cool. All right. So last question here from Jonathan Hall. If you could fix your co-hosts like they're doing with Sonic, how would you like them to look and sound? Well, hmm. I'm going to make Gunny look like Brad Pitt and sound like fucking... Brad Pitt. Whoa. 
Jeez, I never thought. Okay, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know what you mean, fix. Like, what do you want me to change? I don't want to change Gunny. I like the way he looks. You know and what? Sounds. Look at stupid Jesus, you're questions. Gonna, you're, oh man, I'm um, trying to think here. I mean, since we're using guys here, you know what? You're going to be Tom Selleck. Okay. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Yeah, young Tom Selleck. Oh, there you go. Young Tom that Selleck. Big mustache. <laughs> right. How would you sound though? Mm, Let's see. Mm, like a squeaker. Yeah. How does um? What about what about Eric? What are we turning him into? Oh jeez, um, who is he going to be? Hmm, I'm trying to think of who would Eric be? Who would Eric be? Didn't he get lost in the forest? He hasn't been on. I know he's lost in the forest at a campground somewhere. I think he's Throughout dead. I really think he died. And I you think, think so? Like somebody I killed I him and he... took his phone, and they're like, "Guys, I can't make to the show," and they're just trying to throw us off. Because the last I heard, he was in the Appalachian Mountains and. Doing something up hike. there, doing some kind of hiking, burying dead bodies. I don't know what he's doing out there. I don't know. Allegedly, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. He's allegedly out there, guys. <laughs> I can't think of anybody right now. <laughs> but um, but we do have another question, Discord questions on the mm. Discord. You mm. can ask questions on there through our Discord channel. And it comes from the Blaze Experience. Yeah. Okay. And he wants to know what our thoughts are on the Borderlands first gameplay reveal that happened on Thursday. I didn't watch it. I, but it, I did not watch any of it. I don't know where the fuck there was the, the debut in this shit. I guess a bunch of streamers got the codes or whatever to play it. Um, I know on Facebook they had, like, for example, like, uh, what's his face? Darkness429. Yeah, Boogie29988. Boogie that was went on, out there. He's on YouTube, right? So they had him on YouTube and they had a. What's that other fucker's name? The dude who like talks like the military guy. On fucking Stone Mountain sixty four, they had him on Facebook. Yep, because uh, he's a they're Facebook streamers. Him and Darkness are like Facebook streamers or whatever. On Twitch, they had like Doctor Disrespect and those yep. motherfuckers playing it. And uh, yeah, so like they, they had these people playing it on different platforms. On Mixer, I don't know who they had playing it on Mixer. Fuck if I know. Um, but yeah, they had these people playing them, and they fucking were playing uh, Borderlands three. I didn't see any of it, so. I have no yeah, comments I on that. Yeah, I left work Thursday and didn't come back till this morning, so... I, I don't see... I, don't, I, didn't see I just immediately started I, playing I, games. I literally, <laughs> all I know is I heard that they played it, and I haven't seen any of it. I don't know. I don't... You know, and it's funny, I don't know <laughs> if I'm gonna... I guess I will go watch it. I, I hear... It's gonna be funny to see, after playing Borderlands 2 today... Just everyone getting their own loot, like a Division 2 type situation. Well, or, that's good. I like that change. Or, that's an important change right there. That... It's super helpful, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah, quality of life change. They should make those type of changes to the current game right now, the Borderlands 2 and shit, to get people to play. Like, hey, everyone gets their own loot. Fuck it. Hell yeah. And I hear it's more Borderlands stuff. And I and I hear that in a good way. So I'm like, that's what I want is more Borderlands. So hmm. not changing the formula too much. Uh, and our last question on... Discord comes from Mpolo. Mpolo, haven't heard from you in a while, buddy. Where you been? Yeah, he puts up the clips from uh, PUBG and stuff up yeah, in our Discord he's channel. He's playing weird shit on PC. I was him playing like he told me he wanted to get a, a role playing server on GTA Five, and I'm down. I need to buy GTA Five though. But that's you no. Know, I think cool. I've asked you guys, and I haven't seen it in a while. Um, that role play. I always felt it was more of that. I want role play, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Kind of that late teen kind of. Th- you know, people like them, and I and I do enjoy watching country, some of them. I'm your country bumpkin in GTA. Mm-hmm. They're either playing like the Armor Three mod or like a or the GTA mod. Um, and who was it? The uh, Sheriff Eli, who's a streamer. Who? Yeah, that motherfucker. I see him all the time. Yeah, me too. Uh, and he does it's a pretty cop. good. He's at, a cop, right? Yeah, and yeah. sometimes he does a little bit of the light role play stuff, and sometimes he's a little more into it. Where people in all into that channel, shit. they actually use like the police type, you know, voice oh, yeah. software and stuff, and they, yeah, it's pretty neat. Some of it's really funny. Too. Uh, yep, stuff. I get a kick out of it. Um, but anyway, M Polo wants to know if any of us are playing Mord Howl. Uh, he said it's super freaking fun. So I did go to. Uh, I'm looking at it now. It looks cool as shit, and I'm buying it right now. It says. Mordhau is a multiplayer medieval slasher. I'm fucking Create your buying machinery. this. Buy it right now, Gunny. Let's go. Let's play. Gunny, buy it. It's 23 bucks on Steam. Go, Gunny. 26 bucks. 26.99. It's on sale, Gunny. 10% off. Let's go. 
Fast-paced combat, castle sieges, cavalry charges. Dude, this looks like fucking For Honor on a fucking hundred times better looking game. Holy it did remind me when I fired it up. Mother it did look like fucking for Honor. shit! This looks incredible. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Like playing. Find me playing more how tomorrow morning on Steam and everywhere. I'm gonna be playing the shit out of this fucking game. It looks dope as fuck. Let's do it. Oh, I put it in my queue. Where the hair it is? Here it is. Here it is. Buying it right Find now. Find it. Add to cart. All right. Let me check my account. Then I'm gonna buy it. Purchase for myself. Uh, let's see. Is it? Nope. It doesn't say it's early access or anything. So. No, I, I think. No, I think. Good to it go. Is, Maybe I think my it, Criterion. It is early access. What the fuck is my wallet? Came out about a week We're ago. making purchases on the podcast live. Uh, hold on. Let me see. Let me ask what, oh, I got to deposit my paycheck and then I'll be on it. Let's do it. Hey, I see catapults. It's got catapults and crossbows. All right, I'm back. I'm back. We're making purchases live on the podcast. Yeah, I would say go watch the stream. Looking at screenshots, it doesn't do it justice, but there is a stream up it here looks playing really it. Really good. And hey, if you, if I don't like it, I'll just get a refund. No big deal. Yeah. Uh, let me see. So we've got reviews are mostly positive. Mm -hmm. uh, some are saying it's stupid, kind of fun. Same say is some are saying it's a very good game worth a buy, even at full price. Full price? This fucking thirty. Oh, chivalry. That's what it reminded me of. The best chivalry out there. Go buy it right now. But chivalry didn't look as good as this no, one does. No, this looks like really good graphics. I'm buying it. That's all I'm saying, Gunny. I'm sold. I'm just by looking at it. All right. I'm going to add it to my cart. <laughs> Playing it to the it show. For me. Mm, yeah. The old PayPal account. I like a little hack and slash. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, but I think that's all we have for questions. Thank you guys for that. I'm just going to double check, see if we got anything else here. Uh, let's see. Anything else going right. on? No, uh, that is all. All right, people, we're done. We're out of here. Welcome, Scott Neely, to the Horrible Gamers Podcast community in the Facebook group. Yeah, welcome. Welcome. Anyways, we're done. We're done. We're out of here. You can find me on Mixer streaming uh, mixer.com forward slash Jesus Watch Slot. Go follow me. Hype the shit out of me. Uh, share me with your friends. Host me. Follow me. Whatever. Me. I see you unlock your retweets. Thank you. So I can retweet you now. Yeah. I, I didn't know I had those locked until like I looked at my name. I was like, why does my name have a lock next to it? And it's like, oh, you have protected tweets on or some shit. I was like, oh. You know, when, you, when you put those cute pics up for yourself, you don't want those being shared by mm, other people. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. okay. Anyways, people, go. Um, yeah, go and uh, follow me on there. Follow me on Mixer and follow me on Steam. Steam, Jesus Walks a Lot. I'm on there. Buy me games. Buy me. Look, next month is my birthday. I'm turning a good old. How old am I turning, Gunny? 28 years old. Old man. Whew, man, I'm starting to feel it. I'm feeling the old age coming on. I feel like yeah. the, my best years are starting to come be behind me, Gunny. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going to do with myself. Anyways, my birthday's coming up. You know, there's lots of <gasps> games on Steam you can give me. There is. Yes. Um, I expect all the gifts from everyone. Everyone listening needs to give me something. Games, money, coins. Drugs. Sure. I accept drugs, money, hookers, uh, vices, anything. Send me a illegal shit like a rhino's horn. Bitcoins? Do you take those? Take bitcoins. Take all kinds of coins. Gold currency, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, send me anything, people, and you can find me on Xbox Live Gamer Tag Jesus Walks Out. You can find me on PlayStation Network GSUS Walks Out. I will be playing some games on the PS VR pretty soon here. Um, that new game comes out this month. I forget what it's called, but it's that based off the London heist. Um, I forget what it's called, but it looks pretty cool. I think I want to buy that. It's 40 bucks. Not a whole lot of money. I think 40 bucks is a good price, but hopefully it's not like a 
three hour experience or some shit. You know? Yeah. That would suck. Anyways, find me on there. Where can we find you, Gunny? Can we find find me on Xbox Live, Gamer Tag, Gunny Chief, over on Steam, The Gunny Chief, and on Twitter, Gunny Chief. Buy Gunny Chief Games too. His birthday's coming up next week. No, January. <laughs> oh, fuck. Just yeah. buy me games anyway. <laughs> buy him games that you didn't buy him in his birthday three months ago. The ones ago. you forgot about. Yeah, buy him all the games. Get me a. I want to get dirt. Uh, is it dirt four or no? You want what, the new the new dirt game? That's what I want. The hell is mm, it? Give me one of those Valve Index people. Those are the new VR headsets by Valve. Give me you? Destiny. That's what I want. Destiny two on PC. You see that new Valve Index gunny? That badass looking headset for VR from from Valve. No, I just saw the art or the link for it, but I didn't yeah. actually look at four, it. That, that sold out quick. Four ninety nine Valve Index VR. It'll ship August 31st, Gunny. All right, let me see here, Val. That's kind of expensive, man. I mean, for the whole thing. Oh, yeah, it is $4.99. Yikes. That's just for the headset itself. If you want the controllers, that's another $279. Jeez. Reserve yours right now. If you want the base station, another $149. What the fuck are they doing with these things? $1,000 for the, the headset. Two controllers and the base stations. You get two of them. Wow. Headset, headphones, headset cable. That is insane. Okay. That is nuts. $1,000, but it is cheaper. Hey, but there's a lot of game. You know what? This is probably good for them because I'm sure as you browse through your Steam store like I do, a lot of games. There's oh, a lot of even yeah. indie games that yeah, are yeah. VR compatible. Yeah, yeah. Lots of them are. So that's way of the future, folks. Got, but it is a nice headset. I like the uh, foam in the back. Looks very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looks nice. It looks like a, a nice. That'll be my next birthday gift. Alien looking headset. I want. I kind of want to get one. It's a thousand dollars. That's ridiculous, and it's already sold. I out. mean, if we could spend a thousand on a monitor and graphics card, we definitely afford one of these headsets. I mean. Speak for yourself, Gunny, but I cannot afford one of these headsets. Thousand <laughs> dollars, <laughs> yeah. bro. Fuck, a thousand dollars. I need a thousand dollars, people. Send me a thousand dollars, and I'll buy this headset. Apparently, it's sold out already. So who knows how? I mean, yeah, they they were just a set amount for right now. So nice, nice. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, I wish them luck because VR needs to become a bigger thing, man. So more companies do it, and it gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's make it a goal, people. Let's make VR so popular that by the year 2023, all the Chinese people that are playing that it's more than America, they're all going to be playing in VR, too. So, yeah, more VRs. It's cheaper VR for everyone. That's what it means. I mean, that's as we see more companies come on. HTC Vive and... Yeah. You know, and... Anyways... We're yep. done, Gunny. We're fucking done. Get out of here, Gunny. Go. Let's go. We're out of here. Peace out, Brussels Sprouts. Bye. We'll see you next week on the next edition of the Horrible Gamers Podcast. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Or good morning. Whatever you're doing. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Hey, watch where you're going. Good morning. Good night. Good day. Good afternoon. Go to sleep. Goodbye. See you next week. Goodbye.